Aussies running fast on the track and the road right across the world. This weekend was inspiring. Building on the Wave Rebellion Pro, the second version is faster, softer and more stable. So now it's your turn to run fast with the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro 2. Available online at mizuno.com.au and select running stores. Welcome to episode number 318 of the Inside Running Podcast. Thank you for joining us for another week. Massive, massive, massive show coming at you this week. We've got all the news from Zadapec, Fukuoka and Valencia. We've also got some special guests popping in in about an hour's time. They're going to be the stars of our new Road 2 series, so we're going to be meeting them. Uh, all thanks to Mizuno. Welcome to my co-host is Danny Anglesey. Hope is his, his excitement is as large as mine. Julian Spence, how are you going? Good, mate. I'm going good. Nice warm day. Sun's out for once. Thinking about all the people that complain about how cold it was, and then today they complained about how hot it was. That's what I was thinking about today. That's the country we live in now, isn't it? I'm like, you can't complain about one and then not just accept and celebrate the other. So today I'm celebrating the sun, the heat, and the extra little fitness gains that I'm going to get from that. Okay, good. My other co-host, the 217 man up in Canberra, Bradley Croker, how are you? I'm good, Brady, but I'm a little bit worried about you. I feel like you've been up and about for about three days straight and that you're very close to... uh, crashing i've been up and about since wednesday morning croak school camp into zatapec into live streams and trackers for valencia and fukuoka i am um but i'm glad i'm speaking to you boys now i feel like i've spoken to everyone about the running stuff other than you two fellas so i'm, what about I'm happy him, to be here what about him last night moves wants us to bloody record at midnight mm. I, thought so Zach, I thought zach had teed all that up i thought we were committed to that i didn't wa- i did not want to do it i just thought it was locked in that is a lie. You definitely wanted to do it. You were so pumped. He's like, oh, he's like, oh, come on, boys, T- twenty minutes. I'm like, there's no way we're covering this in twenty minutes. It would have been good what for the Patreon say? supporters. Everyone saw the results anyway. We're going to talk about it in twenty four hours time. Settle down, yeah, mate. Different vibes. It hits different in twenty four hours time. But anyway, it's all happening, boys. Did you have a good weekends? How are your energy levels off the back of it on a Monday, Moose? Kind of a uh, an interesting situation it puts you in. Um. Yeah, well, Brett just puts another one on the board, doesn't he? Is that what you're referring to, me trying to make the Olympics? <laughs> nah, I think Brett might be the only boy going to the Olympics at this stage, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. He he ran well. He he ran better than I thought he would. And I saw him drop off the pack when I was watching the stream. I got a brief, like, a brief shot of him just not quite there, maybe 15, 20 metres back. And then I um, went down the beach and, and followed followed down there, like just about what was happening. And um, I was real surprised to see him come in at 208 because I thought if he's dropping off the pack there, then he's gone. Um, but he managed to hold on pretty well until the last few kilometers. Okay. Giving us a big summary of that race already. I like that. Cool. Uh, let's do, let's Sorry. actually stick to the structure of the show. Give me some training weeks first, boys, before we go deep into the results. Croaks, kick things off for us. Uh, okay, so Tuesday was when my week started from a running perspective. And um, yeah, it was a bit wet here. So the session was originally going to be at Thoroughbred Park, but uh, it would have been a bit wet and boggy. So we just trained down on the bike paths around sort of Southwell Park. Um, we haven't trained there for quite a while. But the session was five by two minute reps off a minute recovery uh, and five by one minute reps off a minute recovery um, with two minutes recovery in between the sets because um, a, lot, a lot of my guys were running sort of park run on the Saturday. So it was a bit of a just a tune up where sort of the two minute reps were close to 5K pace um, or effort and the one minute reps um, more like sort of 3K, I suppose. So uh, I went 310, 
304, 305, 307, 307 for the two minute reps, and the one minute reps were between like 254 and 251k pace. So, um, yeah, I was happy with that. Like, I was working reasonably hard. Like, the, the speed stuff for me, I'm finding quite difficult. It's, um, it's really sort of banging me up. Uh, I find on Wednesday mornings, I just sort of know that I've run pretty hard. Um, but like feel re- reasonably comfortable running those paces, but I, I definitely notice I'm just up on my toes a bit more. My calves sort of pull up a bit sore on the on the Wednesday. Um, then on yeah the Wednesday, what did I do? Uh, I did. Where's it up here? Oh, my Wednesday run. Um, oh here we go. No, that's right. Treadmill. Yeah, so it was pissing down rain. So I got home from work and rather than go outside, I just uh, yeah jumped on the treadmill, did an hour at 448s listen to the monthly uh yeah that wasn't wasn't an enjoyable run really it was one of those ones where i was just sort of looking forward to to getting it done um yes yeah, so i think i just did started off at 12k an hour and then uh pumped it up to 12 and a half and then a bit at 13k um, but average out sort of 12 and a half uh thursday i don't run friday there was no group session because most people were doing the park run and I'm finding now, because I've been training with the group for, I don't know, like most of the year, I've, going out for solo sessions is really hard. Whereas for the previous, what, five years, like I was pretty much training solo for everything. So I've sort of become accustomed now to meeting the group. And when I'm not meeting them, it's much harder, uh, especially when I don't have really a program. So I thought I'd just go and do a, well, a longer sort of steady state run. Um, but this ended up being a bit harder than I wanted it to be. So uh, there's a like a 13K sort of segment around Yerriby Pond and stuff, and it looked a bit like a rabbit. And uh, I sort of looked at it a while back, and, yeah, you know, I think it's like 350 per K average. And I thought, oh, that would be a good one just to sort of tick off um, as like a steady state run. But I did it at um, like 3.30 in the afternoon. And I don't know about you boys, but we've been having lots of storms here recently. So... It's quite humid. And you know those days where it rains and then the sun comes out and then it's real steamy and then when you don't have any direct sunlight, it's okay. But then as soon as the sun comes out from behind the clouds, it becomes really steamy. So the heat got to me a little bit. It's probably like 23 degrees maybe, which I haven't done a lot in that. But, um, yeah, I ended up doing 48 minutes at 3.39, so 13.3K. Uh, I felt good for... I don't know, maybe three quarters of it. And then I think just lack of lack of miles, um, you know, these sort of sessions, I think they get you fit, but, uh, yeah, you get exposed if you haven't been running, you know, a lot of mileage and, and your long runs aren't that long. Um, but, yeah, it was a, yeah, it was a decent session, I suppose. Uh, got the segment too, Croak. Got, got the, the segment. Yeah, got the segment. This guy so. in the comments, he's the guy that had it, Dave Camp. Yeah, yeah. Not happy, so, is he? That was his uh, that was his little baby. So, I think, he's, I think there's a um, there's a reverse segment as well. So I will have to go and do that one one yeah, day. That one as well. Fire him the up. The only the only downside about like the only thing I don't like about this loop is you cross a couple of major roads, and so when you when you're going for segments, it's like you don't want to be st- you don't want to be stopping. So you're taking a couple of risks to sort of get across the roads. Um, I never thought I'd see the day, Moose, that Brad Croker <laughs> is chasing segments on Strava. Mm. Well. It little just, things now for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just a little bit, yeah. It was just something to get me out the door, and I thought a long tempo would be good. Uh, hopefully it brings my fitness up a little bit. Saturday, uh, yes, yeah, so we had an auction uh, Saturday morning for our <clears throat> our investment property, so I didn't get out for a run until close to 11 o'clock, and once again, it was a bit warm, but I only had 30-odd minutes, so 7K at 418s. Sorry, reverse that a bit. <laughs> yep. you, had, you had a what? An auction. An auction for one of your investment properties. For our investment property, oh, yeah. I've been going the wrong bloke this whole time. I know. <laughs> How get, many investment properties have you got? Just one. You just the tenants too? No. So when, when we first got together, Viv had just bought a house and uh, I was in the process of building the house that we live in. So when the, case, when the house that we live in now was built, we moved in here and we just rented the other house out and we've decided to sell it. Must be very nice for so, you. So Viv Brad. has an investment property. 
Is that what you're telling us? Well, What's, yeah. What's yours is hers, hers is yours. Yeah, pretty much. Was yeah, it successful, though, Crooks? No, it was. It was successful. No, it was all right. I guess at the end of the day, it's like if you know if they if they're not willing to pay what you want, you just hold on to it. So no. um, you have to yeah. pay an auctioneer even if you don't sell. Yeah, so it's all part of the marketing package, but it was only like it was only a couple hundred bucks for the actual auction itself. Drop in the e- ocean moves. Extra. Rich get yeah. richer. Yeah. <laughs> That's why he's been so happy the last 24 hours. I thought it was because he picked some winners over the weekend, but it's actually the yeah. auction results. Well, I d- well, we'll get to that, but I did pick some winners at that effect. Um, hey. yeah. Pick some winners at that We'll get to it, boys. Relax. We'll get to it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was just my 30-odd minute run, 418s. And then Sunday ran with um, Jack and Rob. Uh, I did 90 minutes. Those guys did two hours, 415 average for me um, for a week of – 72k yeah Very so good. another another just yeah ticked off another 70 odd k week so we did have a little bet running between rob and i so rob thought that uh izzy bat doyle was going to be like significantly faster than lisa through halfway at valencia and i was like nah like n- knowing all the talk was that lisa was going to have a crack at the aussie record i thought oh you know that means you've got to be going like 71-ish through halfway. And I thought that's probably a little bit too aggressive for Izzy, given that, she, you know, Lisa's got time on the board, Izzy doesn't. Um, so, yeah, we put, a, we put a case of beer on it. But as, a, as it turned out, um, they pretty much went through together anyway. So, Well, it doesn't really matter. Rob's got clearly the um, higher running IQ. <laughs> the, the knowledge bank runs deeper in Rob than it does Brad. And yeah. He... Well, I don't know. I think based on the, the talk leading up where it's like, well, if you're going to go for the Aussie record, you're going to be running pretty quick through halfway, probably quicker than 71.45, which is what they ran. Mate, so... Do you know what you're doing? You're making excuses for a race that you went poorly at. That's what you're doing. It's a bet and he won. You no, got to get you got to give win. him the win. The bet was actually who would go through halfway first, and Lisa did actually go through quicker by, like, two seconds. Oh, but, I, uh, I thought you lost the beer. No, nah, no, nah, I won the beer, but we made an agreement, like, after we saw them running together for the first 5K, we're like, well, are we going to go off the tracker where if, if one person's, like, one second up, you lose the bet, or if, if they're clearly in the same pack, it's just a null bet. So we did that, which uh, saved oh. him saved him a case of beer. Of he would he would have. He How is me. that fun? Bet got That's avoided. Oh well, Rob, if you're listening to this, couple real tight asses there, Brady. Yeah. Rob, if Canada you're listening to this, moves. bring a bring a case of beer to training tomorrow, Arvo. <laughs> I'd be making him pay that for sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's yeah. That's my week. Another seventy odd k. Um, just ticking them off. Seventy k's and a slab of beer. Good week from you. Do you ever do a down week, or you just run seventy all the time? That's uh, his limit, isn't it? You can can't run more than seventy, so he just keeps him at seventy on the dot. I feel like it's sort of I don't know. Like I don't really need a down week when I'm running five days a week and my long runs ninety minutes. Yeah, you're getting the rest anyway, aren't you? Yeah. Throughout the week. Yeah. Right, Moose, what'd you do? Oh, uh, I ran about one hundred and thirty-five. Had a couple of little niggles this week. First one was. Oh, what was my first one? Uh, kind of had like a locky thing going on in my good knee, like a meniscus thing. It just wouldn't let me extend it the full range. It's just a bit annoying. It was good on the treddy though. So I ran half an hour in the morning, Monday, real late start for me. And then just 10K around the top of the hill sort of thing uh, in the Arvo. Uh, an hour on Tuesday morning and then got on the treddy. Tuesday Arvo for another half an hour. I'm enjoying the treddy at the moment. Really kind of just locking in and not caring about the pace or anything, just watching movies. Watch this movie. Probably the best pump-up movie you'll ever watch. Guess what it is. I'm going to give you one guess each. Mm. No, I don't know. Rocky. What's your, what is your <laughs> best pump-up movie is another frame for that question. I don't know how many pump up movies like that. Oh, there's a few. Mm. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't really have a pump up movie. You know that really? movie? It's um, it's called The Fighter, where they like that two brothers end up getting to like a UFC tournament. No, that's the that's Warrior. The Warrior is it? 
That's Warrior, and that's what it was. You are kidding. <laughs> They're two brothers, and one of them's like blue collar, yeah, yeah, and the other yeah. one's like off the rails, and they come together in the final to win exactly like this big money. Exactly what it was, and one of them's like Navy a Seal. war hero, yeah, and, PTSD, and the other one's he? Um, fighting for his family house. Yeah. That is it. That is the movie right there. Who would have thought that would pick the same movie? Well, I didn't pick it. I was just mm-hmm. telling you about it. You somehow picked it and called it the wrong name, and we got there in the end. I'm going to Google this because I think it's called The Fighter. I would have gone with Rocky as well, Brady. Yeah, it's called The Fighter, Moose. It's called, are you sure? Christian Bale, Mark Wahlberg. That's no, it? different. Different. Oh, okay. Different movie. Come on. It's mm. called Warrior. It's got... um, It's got... Uh, that that fella out of um, so the Australian guy in it, doesn't it? Out of Batman. Uh, it's got the um, yes. Yeah, you're right. It is Warrior. Is the yeah. fighter good? Why have I got that confused? That's similar. It's got Hardy. Tom Hardy. Tom Joel, Hardy. Joel Edgington. Cool. He's Australian, isn't he? Bloody good movie. Anyway, <laughs> that got me. I was watching that, and my heart rate's going up, and I'm running, thinking, oh, palms are getting sweaty. I was on. Finished that run thinking I was about to just jump in a plane and go on a training camp. Did a workout the next morning though. Uh, 800. So I wanted to move a bit quicker on this one. I wanted to do some like, you know, whatever you want to call it, speed, endurance, whatever. But it's faster than threshold, but it's not all out stuff. So I've, I've done 8 by 800. I give myself a generous rest, 90 seconds. Uh, I did 400 meters warm up, boys. This was a bit of a test of the the, the longer warm up. Probably could have gone a bit longer, but I did feel good straight into the 800. It was my slowest rep, though. So I went. Um, I, I was. I ran the first lap with Ali for her tempo. So I did 83 seconds, and then took 30 seconds, got into the workout. So it was 226, 25, 25, 24. 21, 20, 21, 22, 23. And, and that was happy with how that went, given that that is like the full limit to my mechanical speed. I just, I can't really tick them over much quicker than that. And so I was running almost on my mechanical limit for uh, however long, two minutes something. And it got hard towards the end, which was good. I really did want this one to get hard. Just adding in one session, maybe every fortnight where things are a bit more difficult as we get to a couple of these track races and then we transition across to marathon training. So that was my one. I did a six minute tempo with Ali at the end. Uh, She was doing a, she had a different workout and I was um, jumping in with her just at the end to kind of like a little lactate flush at the end after a, after a solid workout. It feels good after that. You finish, you finish feeling heaps better. Then I jogged that next, I had an Arvo off, jogged the next morning in a um, pair of shoes that didn't didn't love these ones. They're a bit of, they kind of like a toned down version of the Rebellion Pro from Mizuno. This is called the F- Mizuno Rebellion Flash 2. It's got the same sort of geometry as the Pro with the pretty strong rear foot rocker, less exaggerated forefoot rocker. It's not quite as racy. Uh, but it it's sort of designed for faster running or faster running as in faster jogging and perhaps some people would would do tempo workouts in it as well but where i run it's just too uneven the surface for a shoe this unstable i i I need something with way less rocker than that so if it might maybe i'll wear it on concrete but i just don't run on concrete very often good for bike paths though you reckon or better for bike paths for sure it'll suit someone i reckon with a more midfoot strike not a real four foot toey strike just someone who re- lands around the middle of their foot so if that's you you could pr- you probably find the sweet spot for this one jog that arvo just around the streets and then we move to the workout on friday morning so this was fun did this with toby it's good he's coming back and he's relatively fit off what he's been doing pretty surprised with how fit he is actually just w- looking at his heart rate and his workouts and what he's been able to hit like the sort of splits for someone who was away from running for so long and so we joined up together it was another shit shit weather session 
it was horrible actually on that track session it was piss and rain and windy the whole time and that's just like track sessions should be warm and sweaty and humid i reckon whereas yeah neither of these sessions felt like kind of summer and we ran together 315 we we did five by six minutes so 315 314 315 316 318 and it was fun doing this workout with him both of us stayed pretty comfortable for it and yeah i haven't really done a lot of workouts with people lately and and he definitely hasn't done workouts with people so i reckon we're going to try try link up a fair bit going forward and i reckon yeah he's he, all the cycling that he did just come back like I'm, i don't know about you fellas but i was expecting him to start from a lot further back but he's actually he's actually sort of i reckon buffered a lot of that fitness loss by being on the bike so much mm. and he's been pretty diligent on that bike though it's not like he was just going out for one or two a week no he, he was, was doing, doing some massive days. massive rides and even say on sunday he had a long run 24k it's not quite as long as he wants or needs right well he doesn't need it right now but it, he would normally do more than that and then he'll jump on the bike after and do a two-hour ride just to continue that long aerobic work that he would have got with a longer long run. So he's, he's certainly committed to it, and I reckon you're going to find him mid-year absolutely flying. Gold, Gold Coast, isn't he? Gold Coast he's looking at, yeah. But not sure he'll want to give up the uh, Geelong cross-country singlet too easily for a Gold Coast marathon. No, he can do both. Mm, Might miss sort of. miss Sandown Realize maybe one cross country race. Yeah, you can do it. You yeah. pull it off. Um, he had a bad night gambling last night though. I reckon I took three slabs of beer off him. Well, Valencia. Yeah, because he had yeah. he, he backed Chriso over um, Bikili. That was the easiest one I got off him because huh. yeah. everyone thought Bikili was going to DNF, and I'm like, nah, I'm backing Bikili here. Then, Anyone can bet slabs with you because you never pay no, them anyway. I only actually, I've got myself out of all slab debt other than the one I owe you. Oh, right. So, okay. Well, yeah. glad to hear that. Yeah, I'll give it to you. I'm just like, I'd never see you. When I see you in person, I'll give you a slab of beer. Yeah. I'm good for it. <laughs> Did you hear on the monthly croaks how I need a budget for next year, though? Did you get to yeah. that part? Yeah, it's not, that's not happening. That should happen. <laughs> Don't you think, Moose? <laughs> No, nah, that could not be a stupid bet. Slab bets create content, and if I'm going to lose slabs, I reckon they shouldn't be coming out of my own pocket. Give me five slabs in 2024 to lose. Don't, don't make stupid. If you make smart bets, then nothing comes out of your pocket because you win. Yeah, okay. What about what about if we win, then we split them between the three of us? You can also benefit that way. Think about. It I don't trust you, do, you to do the betting though. Cause... Think about it before you do the budget for next year, Crooks. Huh. What did you Saturday, do? Saturday, I ran half an hour, Treddy, and then. Sunday, Saturday, Arvo jogged with Ali, and oh no, what was that? Yeah, Ali and um, Joyce came, and Bree and Ali. I ran with Ali, but Joyce came with Tiggy on the bike, and then Bree came with Pia on the bike. So we all ran as like a, a group, a two families running together and biking together. It would have looked pretty funny. Beautiful. It, it, <laughs> The, the babies just staring at each other. It was really quite a like an odd, odd sort of dynamic, but it's fun. It's good on a sun, Saturday Arvo to get out and do that sort of thing. Would have never have thought that would be fun in the past. <laughs> <laughs> and then Sunday morning got got after it a bit. I wanted two and a half hours, and I got it, which uh, was I was happy about. Climbed five twenty four, so. Not a crazy amount of climbing at 30k mark. We kind of canned it and just stayed flat. But it, there was a few climbs in there, a few solid ones. Heart rate high today, average 413, 35.5k. However, heart rate was high early and just didn't seem to want to go down at any point. Like I couldn't, I couldn't get a period where it just stayed low. And then I looked at the end. I was look. I was asking Toby what his heart rate was the whole way, because I, I was wondering whether my heart rate was off or whether I was sick, because um, you know Breeze had COVID and everything. But his heart rate was actually really high as well. And then I got back to the car and looked at Strava, and everyone's heart rate was at least ten beats higher than normal. 
and the, the humidity was higher this day. It says 91% humidity, but it was only 14 degrees. So it was not like it was hot, but yeah, the humidity did did hit us. Um, we we struggled with that. So it, I guess it's okay. I'm allow myself Sundays to ignore some of those things like and, and push the pace and push the hills and push the, the heart rate a little bit more as long as it's not stupid. Um, but and then recover properly. I take two days for the next workout. So I think it was 135. If, I don't know if you guys can see yeah, it. 138. 138. Whew. Happy with that. Take that. You said track races, so you got that 3k. 3k. A lot of talk about that 3k down here. What date? That, um, it's 15th. Yeah. Okay. And then 13th. the 13th. Then the Geelong 10k. Sixth. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then I'll be doing some marathon stuff before that anyway. Mm, Twelve weeks yesterday. Who are you going to train with for Osaka? Uh, yeah, probably by myself as usual. You should come down for a training camp. Yeah, I was saying to Ali the other week, I might get down there. There even, you go. Yeah, even somewhere around, go down for that 10K and stay for 10 days or something afterwards. Are you entered? 5K sold out? Entered it today. Ooh, lucky. 10K. Is the 10K yeah. sold out? Uh, I'll have to check that now. I'll have to check it. We Yeah, 5K sold out, like... We're telling everyone, get your entry in. Mm. Some people missed out. Just like Melbourne Marathon. Oh, mate, this fun run I did yesterday, 9,000 people. Oh. And I'd call it a low-key fun run. Whoever's That's... selling shoes, Croaks is going to ride, I reckon. Mm. The run and yeah. boom is hit. I was just going to say, those... The rich like... get richer, Brady. They do. I don't, I don't do running events, but maybe I'll get back in that game. Yeah, it'd be a good game to get in, wouldn't it? I thought that Melbourne Marathon stuff was marketing last week. It's wild. Selling out in December the year before. Like, it's going to become like a ballot. It has to. Or, no, what they have to do. We know what they have to do, don't we? Yeah. You, we you, know. You go to Saturday for the half marathon and make the the capacity bigger, or you just cut it all and just go to marathon only. Is that what you think? Yeah. You mm. make it a marathon. And maybe there's a 10K. Maybe get rid of the half. Just put the marathon on the Sunday. Or, like you said, half Saturday, full Sunday. Get that capacity up to twenty thousand. Be like you want to be a big city marathon. That's how you do it. Mm. Well, the problem is there's only like two marathons in the country where you're generally going to run fast, and a lot of rec- a lot there's a lot of runners out there that are concerned by their times, and so it's Gold Coast or Melbourne really. Mm-hmm. So that's why it sells out so quickly because people want to run a race where they're going to run to the best of their ability. Yeah. A lot of people looking at the smaller ones now, though. They're, um, Port Ferry's got, like, I think they're going to get 2,000 people or something. Um, you've got Ballarat. Ballarat oh, putting yeah, up that will do solid, well. solid cash. Great Ocean Road sells out, basically. So all the smaller ones are really, are really picking up as well. Mm, should start one. That nice one. flat course. Where, where would you put it? Geelong? April. Um, I don't know about, yeah, Geelong, the terrain. You got a good Moama. route down there? Have you, have you seen how fast Brady runs in <laughs> Moama? Yeah, Moama's <laughs> pretty good out and back. Some straight roads, but you know, you need a bigger bigger town than that. Don't well, know. Could yeah, you, you Mel- need a... Could you have a spring one in, I mean, an autumn one in Melbourne? There's none in... The, the, yeah, you could. autumn's the place, because you've only got Canberra and now Ballarat. You could, or you you could do one in Geelong. People were talking about Noosa the other day as an option. I was like, oh yeah, it's cool that time of the year up there. Is it that cool? What were the temperatures for this 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 year? Mm, not one hundred percent sure, but it's in like May, I think. You also, run, I think it's a close, it's a hard course because they send everyone out kind of at the same time. Like I remember speaking to someone who did the half, and I reckon they, or maybe the full, and they ran up behind like the other race immediately. Mm. Got to get that stuff sorted. But the, do you think that's the thing as well? People are coming to events as there's a running boom and this is an opportunity to make money, but don't know a lot about running? Mm, I haven't really seen that yet. Okay. I don't think anyone gets in the running event game thinking they're going to make money. It is hard work, that that industry. 
lots and lots of hours, very little returns. Okay. Lots of meetings. There's lots of uh, lots of cogs, aren't there, Moose? Like, yeah. Yeah. There's like, a lot of red tape. There's a lot of different departments to talk to. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't. And the bigger you get, the more that happens. <laughs> Absolutely. And yep. yeah, I would be scared about all that. And would... you rely on a shitload of volunteers. Um, and so finding like community groups to volunteer, um, especially if it's a big event, it's tough. Mm. Anyway, boys, I'll whistle through this week. Monday, 70 minutes, 4.41s, uh, 7K in the afternoon and 8 by 15 second hills. Tuesday, I did 3 by 10 minutes at around about 3.13 pace off a two-minute jog. And then after that, I did like 8 by 30 seconds hard and just like 30, 30 seconds shuffle jog between those. So just working on a bit of speed at the end of the workout. Uh, in the afternoon, I did 7K at 4.42s. And then Wednesday morning, I did 10K at 4.37s, hammer and rain, um, which was nice. I don't mind running in rain when it doesn't happen that often. And then I went to school camp. So I was at school at 7.20 a.m., took the grade fours to um, Beaufort, is it, Moose? That's probably the closest town to Cave Hill Creek. The yeah. Old stomping ground near Ballarat. It's like, yeah, I guess it would be the closest town, you're right. Beautiful. Just out the back. Yeah, beautiful place. Um, stayed at this kind of like camp set up and a massive lake there and all those kind of school camp activities with the abseiling and canoeing and mountain bike riding and ropes courses and all those kind of things. So um, was there from Wednesday to Friday. Did get out for a couple of jogs in the morning. Tim, the owner, who knows you, Moose, was good that uh, the rock up school camp and introduce ourselves and the guy asked me if I'm, if I'm Julian Spencer's mate from the Inside Run podcast. Which is always you a worry when people say that. Business partner. Business partner. Um, his son Charlie's a bloody good runner too. He was in Zadapec on um, on Saturday night. So strong yep. Ballarat guy. Um, I think he's running sub fifteen for five k's and eight thirty ish for three k's. So he's doing pretty well. Does a bit of commuting to get to school. I think he boards in Ballarat now. Oh, I think yeah. maybe, maybe he's got a couple of kids. One of them boards, one of them doesn't. But yeah. Bit of a drive in there. He took us on these beautiful trails, though, Thursday morning, like this loop. Would have never been able to do it by ourselves. Um, and I'm saying by ourselves because one of the other teachers rode a bike next to us. And, yeah, Tim was on the bike as well. Um, the pine forest, this, like, bushland. It was just beautiful. Absolutely loved it. 10.8K at 402s. And then Friday, um, Tim didn't join us, but it was, yeah, Scotty and I. We just did an out and back, 5K out, 5K back. And we kind of like, when people on the bike, you just get rolling a bit more, I feel, because you've got to like keep up with them. You don't want to slow them down too much. So we averaged 354s on this one, and you have to get back pretty quick. You don't get a lot of time to just sneak off from camp to do a, a social run. Um, and then when we got back, actually, we took the kids for a lap around the uh, the camp, which was about 1.2k. Then I came back about, oh, I think I got back about 5.30 p.m. Friday night, had a half decent night's sleep Friday night before going to Melbourne on Saturday. But before that, I just did 60 minutes in strides. Went and watched Zatapec, which was amazing. We'll get to that a bit later on. And then Sunday, went and ran at the Wellness Run, raising money for Beyond Blue. Uh, I signed up to this race because I knew I was going to be in Melbourne. But when I woke up after a pretty late night, I was just like, this is a bad idea. Just probably one too many things for the weekend doing the commentary at Zatapec doing the school camp and um and a race so I was pretty like exhausted when I got to this thing and, and not really motivated to to run super hard or fast and really just wanted to try and win as easily as possible uh gun went tail win for about one and a half two k so got out kind of pretty quick in low three minute k's then we turned into a headwind and um a Glenn Huntley singlet went straight past me around the u-turn Will Ockerden, I'd never seen him before. I think he's a bit of a younger Glenn Huntley runner. Maybe he runs in their junior team, not their uh, their Premier Division team. But he kind of took the took the win for a couple of k, and we kind of settled down. And then just sensed that he was kind of tiring around oh, three and a half four k. So kind of made a bit of a move and cruised through the turnaround at seven k before getting a tailwind again. And then yeah, came home. Um, pretty busy out there though. We're cutting through traffic pretty much from the gun. So the half marathon did two laps of this ten k course. And they started about an hour earlier than us. So we're pretty much running, oh, what's that, an hour. Anyone that's running 10K in an hour, we're coming through the back off. 16K. Um, yeah. 
So it was, and I had, I had two motorbikes and a bike rider in front of me, like trying to clear the way. So they were kind of directing the people we were catching to go into the left lane. So we could be in the right lane of the road. And, um, there's just people with headphones and stuff who like pretty much have two motorbikes right behind them, bipping their horn and have no idea that that's, that's going on behind them. So a couple of times we kind of like stopped starting. A couple of times I went past the motorbikes, like zigzag through because they couldn't get through, but I could. And um, even just coming into like the finish shoot at the end, it was probably like 300 metres, like through this park, you just pretty much have to switch off and, and get to the finish line. Um, and you'd, I just come through as a wave, so it was like there was no finishing um, tape to break or anyone on the mic or anything like that. It just kind of just, just went through with the, the waves of people running the half marathon and then... Yeah, it was. Uh, it was good. Oh, I guess you kind of expect that a bit when you're doing charity kind of fun runs. That they're they're going to be a bit different, and they're trying to have a whole lot of people on the course at the one time. So I ran thirty one thirty six, which I don't. I think's probably an indication of where I was at, being pretty tired and um, considering the traffic on the course to kind of weave through. But it was good. Good to get a win. Can't take hey, that, um... can't take that for granted picked up a couple of prizes actually got our my result was voided so we got to the presentations and they called out mattress who came third has the winner and then there's a few of us like standing around and mattress is pretty good obviously he's just like yeah nah this isn't right so we went over to the the timing tent and because my time was quicker than 32 minutes they thought that was incorrect so they just voided the result <laughs> <laughs> so it's a flagged. pretty it's a pretty prestigious race then well, it's a couple of years in the making. I'm not sure. Yeah, the lady was explaining to me that the timing results must have like settings on it, like of what times to expect, and they'd set the set the settings to 32 minutes or something like that. So when one came in under 32 minutes, it pretty much just was like, oh, this is an error. Like, get rid of this one. But the half marathon would be good because you'd get the run of the road. You wouldn't have to run through any traffic, I don't think, and you'd be yeah free road the whole thing. So. Um, some timings of start start lines and stuff like that. I reckon they could. I'm not sure what it was like for people further back in the 10k, but I assume anyone running quicker than 45 minutes would have, um, yeah, hit some of that traffic. But the main goal was it was to raise money, so not going to be too critical of it. You just no no. Wait, hold up, hold up. Just about a minute ago, you said, yeah, just the whole goal down here was to get the win as easy as possible. Yeah, which I did. But you just, then you just said the whole goal was to raise money. No, the, the goal of which, the race. Which one is it? The goal of the race and the organisers is to raise money. The goal for did, me was to like win as easy as possible. But how much did you win by? Because uh, if you wanted to win minute? by as easy as possible, yeah, well, that's not winning as easy as possible, yeah. is it? Well, I'd look behind. Yeah. Is, I got to like <laughs> eight. I looked, I got so you've, to, gone full, you've gone full gas. No, I haven't gone full gas. I looked behind me at 8K and all I could see was just a wall of people that I was passing. I'm just like, geez, I hope that Glenn Huntley guy is not right behind me because I wouldn't have been able to pick him out of this like audience of this crowd. No heart rate, convenient. I wasn't, uh, yeah, that wasn't full. I, I reckon if I had a gun to my head, I could have broken 31 minutes, but I was, I was still working pretty hard to run 31, 35. The other thing yeah. was uh, how you framed it. Well, I turned around into a massive headwind and all of a sudden, this young bloke came past. He took him. me going into the corner. Oh, oh. I was like, "You I beauty!" Went this, I went around this cone and got a headwind, and all of a sudden, I, I shifted to second gear and waited for someone to come past. No, we took the we took the corner together, and he went wider than I did. I took it pretty sharp, and he just kind of whipped straight around and, and took the lead. Real brave old man, you are. No, well, well, it's two, stack, two weeks in a row on. now. That's two wins in a row. Yeah, you're right, Croaks. No, two weeks. Two a, weeks in a row where you've just. Uh, I'm on a winning I'm, streak. Hung the young fellas out there to dry. Hey, he led for about 500 metres of 10K. Every other metre I was leading. So, so you're on a, you are on a win streak now. You're well, picking up all the big Ws around the I know. The state. I picked up a couple of big ones over the week. So put that next to the name. There must be a paddle steamer race this weekend or something, Brady. <laughs> nah, that's already been the paddle steamer one. No, you I think say I'm... you were coming down to Roo Run? <laughs> yeah, it's a similar kind of ability. I'll leave that one for you. <laughs> mm. um, nah, I'm... Nothing until that Surf Coast one, I think, for me. Just going to do some training. Just got to get some, shot of there too as well. Cause get, you... get some sleep, boys. We got a pacemaker right. for it, Moose. Are you going to do it? Yeah, the 10K. I'm yeah, into I mean, pace, you're going to pace me. You're pace no, I'm not going to pace you. Let's get someone right. to take us through in like 15 dead, 15 10. That won't be, uh, that won't be my pace. Yes, it will be. You're fit as. 
No, I'm not that. No, 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 no. This is your week. Do not shift this because this has been good, good content. One sixteen k for me. Planned down week because I knew I had camp and wasn't going to run much and had other stuff going on in my life and I didn't want to burn out by trying to fit in hundred hundred miles. You going to tell us about your commentary gig a bit more? No, uh, yeah, that was good. We can do that. Do you want to go to Zadipec okay. News? Zadipec con- commentary. It was good. I was scared. I was nervous because like. I don't know, like in this on this show, obviously it doesn't go out live, so you've got that safety net. And you also, I wasn't sure what was really going to be required from me. Like, I wasn't sure how often they were going to ask for my opinion on stuff because I actually wasn't one of the commentators calling the actual races. And you've got to think pretty quick when they say, like, what do you reckon about that, Brady? It's like, Phew. you never know when they're going to say that and then what's going to come off the top of your head. So those, like, unknowns were causing me a bit of... Um, I no, I wouldn't say anxiety, but a bit. I was a bit uncomfortable driving down to Melbourne on Saturday because, and you're working with people you never worked with before, so um, and doing a job that you've never done before. So yeah, I was a bit nervous going in, but I think it went pretty well. Some some positive comments have come in. It was just good to um, yeah be in the box and like even just the amount of different cords and plugs and push this button and mute yourself and this is a microphone and you can hear yourself like as you're talking, which I found was pretty weird. And then you look over in the box next year, and it's like Bruce McAvaney's in that one, and like Tams and Manu and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it was a good experience. Glad that you guys, uh, you guys both sat and listened on the stream. Didn't put me on yeah. mute. Did a good job, mate. Well done. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I, I liked it. I thought you were good. Yeah. Well, got, got a few predictions wrong though. During the oh, what about the one you sent into me? And then you're like, yeah, this <laughs> this girl's going to go well in the under twenties race. So I read yeah. it out, and she comes like fourteenth. That's why Moose wasn't in the commentary box. <laughs> That's right. You yeah, don't make calls like that. And I must say, thank God, because there were a lot. Of, I had my phone like on the bench, and people like sending me like Dave Tarbottom was sending me like stats the whole <laughs> night. And I'm like, so if you heard me like wheel off something, that wasn't just me. I had a lot of people. Croak, you were sending me stuff in the group chat. Like, yeah, there was a whole lot of like good intel coming into my DMs that I was just spitting out on air. So that was good, and I got pretty excited. Like, it was a good meet to call because there were some amazing results. Do you want to go to Zadpec now and then we'll thank some patrons a bit later while we're here? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. What do you want to start with? Uh, let's go with the 10K races. All right. Andrew Cor- Corscurran. That's a hard name to pronounce, fellas. He got the win, 27.56. Jack Rain, the second, 27.57. Pat Tien, and third, 28.00. Andre Waring got the bronze for the Australian champs in at 28.30. Because the winner, Andrew Corsgren, was from Ireland. Big kick finish, 57 last lap. He had some um, slow 5 and 10k PBs, Corsgren, but we knew he was in shape and is a national record holder for the 1500 uh, with a 330. So kick finish through 5k in, I think it was 1405, which probably needed to be a bit quicker if they were going to get rid of Corsgren because he could um, still sit there. They got rid of every, pretty much everyone else. And then, yeah, fascinating race. Pat was trying to drop Jack. Jack knew he then, probably with 600 to go, that he needed to drop, drop Corsgren and um, tried to do it. And then, yeah, massive kick down 200 metres to go for the Irishman, fellas. What do you think? Well, firstly, um, you you had the field last week when you were Ruffles. previewing this. Well, I didn't hear his name mentioned at all last week. Well, because Dave McNeil and Zach Fascioni pulled out. So like well, I, I mentioned two guys, and both of them didn't start, which is pretty unlucky. But if you go watch the stream, I gave I gave this guy a shout-out early in the stream. Well, I don't think, though, yeah, but you only – he came onto your radar after Cam Myers wrote in and said, boys, you didn't even mention this bloke. And, uh, yeah, so that's poor from you. No, he came, in, he came onto my radar when I did my notes on Tuesday last week, and I was like, oh, shit, this guy's running 3.30. And I was like, yeah, initially but... I thought, oh, he's been training with the Melbourne Track Club in Falls Creek. He'll probably just be a pacemaker. Mm. But then, yeah, I did do my um, research on him the day after we, we recorded last week. And I'm like, oh, this guy does have a kick finish. And if it's slow, he'll be there with the bell and win it. Yeah, it was but interesting. Cam was good. It was interesting in that, like, we knew that Jack would sit on Pat and out kick him if it was there with a lap to go. But then um, Corskeren did to Jack what Jack does to Pat. And so... Jack really needed to go a lot earlier than he did. But I personally think Jack was pretty much on his limit because um, when he made a move, he, like, went past Pat, but then Pat ended up going back past Jack with maybe, what, 250 to go. 
Um, and then Jack was able to rally and, and go past Pat again in the last like 150 or 100 or whatever. So, um, yeah, it was was interesting. Um, yeah, feel feel sorry for Pat. It's like yeah, you do, it, don't it, you? It, it's well, like I like the way that he races. It's very Stewie McSwain like, where it's like I don't care what everybody else is doing. I'm just going to run the race to the best of my ability. And if they're you know able to kick me out, kick me at the end, then then good luck to them. But I still think it's a pretty good sign for Pat, given you know where he's been and and what he's got coming up. I, when you said that you thought Robbo was the only you know potential guy running the marathon at the Olympics, I I still think Pat's got the he's a caliber of athlete that can run the the time I think for the marathon. Yeah, I said that about thinking about Pat. To be honest, I was more referring mm. to Ed Goddard's result on the weekend and Andy Buchanan's injury. Yeah, yeah. Moose, what do you think? Yeah, I I think. It, I was wondering if it was windy at the at the meet or not because I was expecting Pat to run more splits quicker than what he did. I, I, I think in order to drop someone like Jack and take the, the sting out of him, and especially Corskeren, who's a 330 guy who hasn't run many 10Ks, the, when the pace had dropped out, the splits kind of slowed a little, and I reckon what, what Pat probably had to do if he was in good shape and he would have he would have been able to do this quite easily is is drop like 10 splits between 64 and 66 yeah they're all 68 low pretty much that's right yeah and so that's not going to bother someone like Corsica and who who's strong enough to hold on and and it certainly won't bother jack who, who that's comfortable for him so that's where I like. Once we saw that those splits were in the 68s, uh, I, I kind of knew Pat wasn't going to challenge it. Well, he would challenge, but he wasn't going to be able to pull that off. Um, it was blowy. Like there was a wind kind of coming um, where that stage was in the bridge. It was kind of like a headwind on that 100. Yeah. Okay. So and it kind of moved around. Some races you looked up and like flags weren't moving. And other races they were blowing quite a bit. So it probably depend on what time of the night it was. Yeah, it it did. It seemed like there was windy. Even in the women's race, there were signs that it was windy and just how the race was run. Yeah, we'll get to that now. Lauren Ryan, your girl, Crokes, you picked mm, her last week. Picked it. She got the win in 32.54. Holly Campbell, 32.54. Rose Davies. So that was pretty close, but it was 0.9 of a second. Rose Davies, third in 32.55.8. This race, like in the first like six laps, we had nothing to talk about because... It was slow. Nothing was happening. That Nick Wall guy started talking about like childbirth and stuff, and I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, we've got to get off this. Like, we can't go down this rabbit hole. Um, and then Lauren Ryan made it interesting when she went to the front and started throwing down 74s. I'm going to say we've like, was it 18 laps to go, 19 laps to go? Yeah, it was a long way to go, but it uh, certainly yeah made the race a little bit more interesting, and then it got even more interesting after that. Yeah, and it was like... The good thing that made it interesting was that Rose Davies was so far back in the pack that she got caught napping and then had to respond to it. Mm. Like, And she had to work really hard over three or four laps to actually close that gap. She would have had to run a couple of like 71, 72s to get back on Holly Campbell and, um, yeah, Lauren, Lauren Lauren. Yeah. But then, like, after Rose caught up, they then slowed down so much that um, Caitlin Adams got back on. Yeah, and, and Ryan, Tara yeah. Palm, and then Tara Palm went around them because they mm-hmm. ran a 90-second lap. Yeah, and so, th- but then it was, like, maybe a lap or so where they're all together, and then there was another acceleration. And so, although early on I'm like, oh, this race is so dull, like, yeah. towards the end or three quarters of the way through, like, you didn't really know who was going to win. And with all the surges, it sort of reminded me of, like this is how the, like the Africans used to you know use these tactics a lot, except like it was very fart lecky. Except they never used to have probably laps quite as slow as what the girls were running there. Well, they um, ran a ninety at one stage, ninety yeah. second lap. Yeah, but and um, then I reckon you messaged us saying you were going to start watching Netflix <laughs> and turned into the most interesting race of the night. But then do you reckon it then put pressure on Rose because then she made a move with about eight laps to go and put in like a I think it was a seventy or seventy one. And I remember talking to the guys in the box because they were like, "This, she's gone for home. And I'm like, she can't maintain this for home. Like, this is 255 pace. Like, and it almost, I think that she settled maybe and recovered off catching them. And then she kind of put herself back on the coals, which then I think was her undoing. 
yeah, yeah. It's often a fine line, those sort of races, you know, being at sort of that limit that you can handle versus, you know, spiking the lactate and, and overcooking it a bit. Mm, and then we saw a massive kick down again. Um, the celebration was great from Lauren. I love the, the early celebration. And then she nearly walked across the finish line and Holly nearly caught her. Holly Campbell, <laughs> imagine having the field last week, Moose, and not even mentioning her name. Yeah, I'm not sure why you wouldn't do that. Like mm. when you have been you're supposed backwards. to look through the entire field, not just pick one. Although credit well, to him, you picked the right one. Like, hang on a second. We, you guys had one athlete each, so the whole idea of looking at the field was out of the field. Who is going to win the race? I picked the winner, Andrew Corskeren. You had the field, Brady. Didn't even mention, didn't even mention there. that bloke's name. And look, your research. This is probably the reason why your Instagram post of you doing the research didn't get shared on the AA website, whereas. Tamsin's did. Yeah. So maybe, so maybe if you were a bit better researcher, you would get the share on the AA website. Jeez, relax on the Instagram, Instagram yeah. account. Sorry. Athletes Australia hate me. This was an Athletes Victoria job, I think. But yeah, fancy that Tamsin puts up a photo of her research. I did exactly the same photo, tagged in Athletes Australia. Nothing. Yeah, well, she probably had Corsican as one of the favourites. Uh, she had, no, I zoomed in on her notes. She just had the junior kids. I wish I could hear that call that her and Bruce did in stadium. Uh, I'd love to know how we stacked up against them because I reckon I might go for a croaks. Reckon I can get the gig for Paris, put me in the box for the Olympic marathon. Yeah. I'll, I'll sign the petition. I reckon we start a petition. Trail full for Tamsin. Sub her out. Anyway, oh, look, nah, I'm I am joking. all for that. I'll back <laughs> that in. I would love to hear you there. I reckon you can actually talk about something not MTC because mm. – the, there's a lot of athletes that get missed in the races she calls that aren't part of the Melbourne Track Club. Oh yeah, I didn't mention super shoes at all, Moose. You yeah. did well as well. Four I don't hours think I of talking. Didn't, once, we didn't honest. mention spikes. I don't think in our whole call. That's or, probably uh, why I enjoyed it so much. <laughs> or the the kids' names of the runners out there. What do you mean? Oh yeah, <laughs> the babies. What babies' you, names. Babies' names. I didn't mention, but yeah, no. Nah, I just yeah. said children at one stage when we were talking about that. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, so I don't know if we went through the times, but Lauren Ryan, yeah, 32.54, Holly Campbell, 32.54.94, and Rose Davies, 32.55.82. Yeah, Holly Campbell, that's a, it's been a good, like, that went under the radar. I'm not, I was just getting into your croaks. Mm. Like, she's yeah. come back from injury, missed world cross-country champs after she had a bit of a blind early in the year. So that was, a, and she covered all the moves. Like, she was mm. always behind Lauren or Rose, whoever was throwing moves down. She was right there. That's a great Here's, results from her. Well, what I was a little frustrated by, and I thought it was at the time, I thought it was a big mistake, was when the girls stopped running and just allowed everyone back in the race, including Rose. When I saw the move happen from Lauren, I thought this is clever, and I also thought this is kind of unprofessional, almost from Rose to be so far back in the pack and have to come around 10 athletes to then try to bridge the gap that was already 20, 30 metres ahead. Um, so that, w that was one thing I thought. I thought, oh, she must be confident if she's going to sit 10, like, so far back and, and, and not have to cover moves. Like, she obviously didn't think there would be any moves made. Um, but then once that move was made, I thought, oh, this is good. You've got Rose, who's the clear race favourite at the time on the ropes and she's having trouble catching you. She's having to do all the work by herself. Perhaps we should continue this and, and work together to, to press the pace a little. Um, but it didn't happen. I, I thought and in the end, Lauren Ryan won anyway. Um, but I thought maybe if Holly Campbell was in that position, maybe she backs her kick over the other two, but uh, I would have thought that that would be the move to keep, keep that move going. Yeah, I thought they were going to team up. I reckon you see the same move in 12 months' time. Holly Campbell does, just with an extra 12 months behind her. A bit more confidence on the big stage. Well, I don't think that move gets made in uh, yeah, 12 months. Yeah. I just don't think anyone see, will, will allow that. Yeah, again. I'm more saying like if 12 months prior to this, Holly Campbell had, had a no injury and like a few more races on the board and things like that. A bit more confidence. But she looked right at home. Um, yeah, great race, great race. Uh, 3K, Matthew Ramsden got the win, 8 flat point two zero to Jesse Hunt, 8 flat point two one. Your boy Croaks, Cam Myers, third, 8 flat point seven zero. They went to the photo. It was pretty close. Mm. Um, it was a great finish. 
Jesse Hunt impressed me too. Probably yeah. the the unfamiliar name of those three, and for him to put Matthew Ramsden, um, you know, very close to beating him, and he just didn't give up in that last fifty meters where it looked like Ramsden was getting away. Could be one to watch, I reckon, Jesse Hunt. Yeah, three thirty six guy in the states and then back, yeah. but from WA originally. They kind of get yeah. lost a bit the WA runners, don't they? Yeah, I'd never heard of him before. Yeah, when I, when he signed with on, I was like, who's this guy? I've got to start doing some research. Mm. But good pickup for those guys to get him. Yep. Uh, the women's, Morty Skyring, she ran 855.39. Jodie McCain from Ireland was second in 95.82. And Stella Radford was third in 903.7. This, I fear, was the first time we've seen Morty Skyring mm. at what I reckon on want her to be. Hundred percent, and she's yeah, she's right. come from college and stuff. But I felt like there was a bit of hype, and then some of her results, we kind of saw them, and you're like, mm, okay, maybe, maybe not. And then I saw this move with six hundred to go, and thought, oh shit, yeah, this yeah. is um, this is the sky ring that people have been talking about. Yeah, I agree. Like up until this point, when she signed, it's, I found it very like inconsistent, and there was nothing that for me stood out because I, I didn't really follow her. Um, races over in the US when she was at college, but there's nothing that I'm like, oh, okay, like she hasn't done anything amazing, but the way that she dominated this race and like 8.55 at this time of the season, like that's a really positive sign. And uh, if she can, you know, obviously use this as a springboard, um, she's definitely one to watch for the next next track season. Yeah. Any thoughts there, Moose, before we go to Dee Costello? Oh, exactly what you said. Um, I, I think this is, Breakout. I've I've seen her name listed every time I see the the roster of athletes, and I think, oh, she might. I mean, she's there on the group, but I haven't really seen her in Australia do anything worthwhile. And so that was it. That was that was cool to to learn of her a bit more. Yeah, Deke Stell under twenty three k. This was won by Peyton Craig eight eighteen point one seven. Benjamin Thomas was second eight twenty point two, and then Kai Hehir was third in eight twenty four point two seven. Uh, sit and kick boys wasn't it Logan Janetsky tried and I think everyone knew he had to try but these guys have just got top end speed to burn yeah I, I um I in hindsight like I feel like Ben Thomas maybe was just a bit too aggressive with his move I, I feel like he because he had a massive gap yeah. on Peyton Craig with probably he, even two, 200 to go because he went but at it, 600 didn't he yeah and it was a really yeah, really like aggressive he was in the last one and, and like he he got to 50 to go and he was he was cooked Whereas I feel like if he was maybe just a little, like didn't accelerate quite as quickly, then he might have been a better chance of winning. Because um, at one point I thought, there's no way they're going to bring him back. Like he's got too much of a lead, but it was, yeah, he'd obviously mm. just cooked himself in that from 600 out to probably 200 out. He did look very good when he went. Yeah, he did. And then the Peyton, women, oh, sorry. So just on, sorry, just on that, Peyton Craig, he is a triathlete, correct? Was but he's now oh, foc- yeah so, but now he's focusing um, okay. solely on the track. Lovely, good for us. Good for running, isn't it? And then the Ondieki three k. Do you want to talk about that one, Croes? Because we were meant to have guests come in five minutes ago, which I forgot about because we're talking about this stuff. That I'm just trying to uh, get organised now. Yeah, so there's a big pack, um, and like Claudia, uh, Claudia Hollingsworth, like she sort of just sat in the right positions, the right time, like really professional. Um, and was able to sort of, I guess, kick away with like 200 to go. Um, she won in 929.13. Um, Ada Rand was second in 930.25, and Aspen Anderson uh, third in 933.33. So um, Claudia looked pretty dominant there, Moose, like in control. Agreed, yeah. I, she looked, profe- like you mentioned the word professional, that's how I saw it, and clinical. She looked like a professional runner, basically, in a junior race, which is exactly what she is. Yeah. A bit like, I suppose, Cam last year, in a way, like just yeah. was able to control things. And you knew that at any at any point, they could take off and they could win it multiple ways. Yep. That's that's right. And, yeah, she, she just looks like... I remember watching her kicks over the years, Claudia, and she's still got that kick. Like, it, she just... She's got to get stronger so she can use it at the end of some of the fast races. Mm. But, yeah, be, like I always like – it's a good follow-up. Where are the under-20 winners from last year? Where are they now? Yeah. Yep. Or even in two to three years? We should do a segment on that. Yeah. Well, I think we made a rule with the um, 
you know, ones to watch for the following year. You can't pick the under 20, the yeah. 3K champions. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and I guess the only other result, like there's, there's 600 meter races uh, on the, the program, which we don't normally talk about, but um, Bandiria Boyer, she won in 86.34 and just missed the national 600 meter record, which obviously 600 meter races aren't run that, that often, but no. should just make note, note of that. Just on the um, under-20 stuff, what are your thoughts on Cam Myers um, not running the junior race to run the Open 3K? I don't have an issue I, with it. I know it. he's won it before, but like, do you reckon it'd be cool to have your name on that trophy two or three times? Mm. I think he's a, he's bigger than this. Yeah. He's bigger than junior running now. Mm. He's got no interest. This guy wants to make the Olympics. Like, Look at what he did this last season. Like, He was in Diamond Leagues and pacing Diamond Leagues. To then go back to like a De Castella under twenty. Okay, then um, does he win that race if he was in it with the way yes. those boys yes. kicked? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Because okay. I think I think Cam would be smart enough to, like, he would know what these guys have got as way of a kick, but also like, like I'm guessing Peyton Craig's probably run mid three forties. Um, for 1500 so cams although he's not super sharp at the moment like would still probably out kick peyton but cam last year if you watched him in these sort of races he just winds it up from like 600 800 out to the point that almost takes these boys kicks away yeah great tactician Mm. um let's thank some patreon supporters i'm still pushing buttons behind the scenes here but let's thank some patreon supporters and then we'll see if we can get some guests in all right, I've got Neil Wiktorski from Ireland. Uh, Neil has a world athletics profile, but there's been nothing on his Strava since May. He's run 15.02 at the 2021 Kilcock 5K, a best 10K on Strava of 31.45, which came during this year's Dungarvan 10-mile race, ran 69.54 for a half back in 2016, and ran 2.23 at the 2022 Seville Marathon. So some pretty... um. Pretty decent PBs there from Neil, and thanks for your support. Going all right, Neil. Mm, I've got um, I got Sam Slaney, so local uh, lady or gent. I'm going to say gent off gent. the time. Yep, okay. Um, follows me on Strava, so that's a good mm. shout from you, Sam. May have run may have run mm. 88 minutes at this year's Run Melbourne half, and 2:46 at the Melbourne Marathon after running 3:09. Last year and 324 the year before that. Jeez, mm. maybe he's a run strong man with those sort of time <laughs> improvements. Yeah, uh, so I'm not not sure. Like we have this um we have this website like Race View or whatever, and you put their names in, and it shows sort of all the the fun runs that they've done. And yeah, there's a Sam Slaney that ran like yeah 324 for the marathon, then the next year 309, and then 246 all at Melbourne Marathon. So it's a pretty impressive uh, improvement over three years. It's like a linear progression almost. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Good on you, Sam. Thank you. And I'm thanking uh, Tess Marks, who I did see on the start line of the wellness run yesterday. She's got PBs of 17.59 for 5K on the track, 36.35 at the Lakeside 10K, 81 minutes at the 2022 and 2023 half marathon. What, exactly to the second as well, Chris? Pretty much. Pretty much, like really? yeah, within 10, 10 seconds, yeah. Yep. Okay, and then 254 at this year's Gold Coast uh, Marathon. Fun fact, I walked to the start line with Tess. We had a quick chat as we're walking from the, um, the swimming pool there, boys, to the start line. Gave her some advice about how to run the race, and it's good to know that she ran a PB that day. Um, finished second at yesterday, yesterday's 2XU. Um, is it 2XU or 2 times you? 2XU. 2 times you. Is it? Yeah. I reckon in Bendigo back in the day we used to call it 2XU. Anyway. Yeah, I've used both in the past. Yeah, I think yes. it's two times. I think it's two times you. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I think you're, she... all, you're also the bloke who says Warwick. Yeah, I know. And... So let's not go off your intuition. <laughs> and, and Graham Fricks. Yeah, maybe it's just a Bendigo <laughs> thing, fellas. Uh, that's not bad. In six years of podcast and stuff, up two words. Um, think maybe she might be a Taylor Swift fan. Who isn't, eh? I reckon she'd have tickets too to the Melbourne shows coming up. Crashing ticket tech, that kind of stuff. So thank you, Tess, Neil, and Sam, for your support of the podcast. Uh, tell me, Moose, why is a good reason to support the Inside Running podcast on uh, Patreon while I get some guests organised? Well, one reason will be you get to hear Chris O's chat about his Valencia race. Hopefully you can do the monthly early this month. Wouldn't yeah. mind that. We'll be, do- mind getting- 
will be doing it soon. I reckon. Hopefully, you'll it... hopefully you'll come back. Yeah. Nah. What time we should mention? Is it two thirty-five? Two thirty-six, mm, maybe. Like it doesn't yeah. really matter if we're saying two thirty, does it? it? No. Got to the finish line though, which I'm proud of him about that because he has had a few DNS recently. So it was good to see him get through to the finish line. So that's one good thing. Croaks, what's another reason to sign up to Patreon? Oh, just the back catalogue. If anybody's running any of the major marathons around the world, then there's a you know there's a good chance that we've done a Road Two series, and you can see how the likes of Sinead Diver and Ellie Pashley have prepped for the ten weeks before that. So that's um worth its weight in gold. That stuff. There was one before the Olympics. How good was that one? Where they they got on. Ali was prepping for the Olympics, and they also got on. Um, all other Olympians that were coming into the the race as well. That was pretty interesting, mm. I thought. And yeah. we got a recap off that as well, like race recap. We had, like, I remember Brett was talking about his prep but when he was maybe... Oh, yeah, a... they got, like, Dave McNeil and Ryan Gregson come on. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah that was a Road to Nowhere series. Forgot yeah, about and that. And even, even some of the old, like, Q&A stuff, like, there's some really good training talk in there. You blokes have sold it well there while I was padding to get our guests organised. Uh, we are starting a new series. So this, although we're in the Patreon thanks section, this is going to be going out to the general population for eight weeks as of the, uh, what date are we starting this third, one, boys? Third, about 13th of Jan. 13th of Jan. Thanks to Mizuno. Uh, Mizuno are looking after two of their, I'm going to say pro athletes, who are heading to Osaka Marathon this year. We've got two of them who are going to be uh, documenting their training for the next, or well, not the next eight weeks, but four, eight weeks starting in Jan. Moose, you're also going to be joining them over there. One of them ran a marathon yesterday, and I think one of them's in New Zealand at the moment. Rachel McGuinness, have I got you there and Reese Edwards? Neither. <laughs> well, yeah. sorry, Reece I'm here. There. He was on mute. Yeah, I'm here. Sorry about that, lads. That's all right. Reese, how are you going? Congratulations on the uh, Singapore marathon yesterday. <laughs> Congratulations. I had a I had a bad race. You ran top ten in a gold label marathon, didn't you? Yeah, I, I came ninth, but I still didn't perform. Like I think if I had have had a good day, I could have run two twenty, two twenty one maybe on that course. So I didn't really put together a great race. Hot though. Tell us about the conditions. Yeah, like like really humid and hot, and just you know the air just feels thicker. Just but I also. You know, I had a free shot. I had some help getting over there and stuff. So I just went out with the uh, the big pack of African runners. So I think I was actually on uh, PB pace through 10K and running with the main pack of Africans. So that's probably not a good decision in uh, Singapore humidity either. Has it turned you off hot marathons in the future? No. Nah, so I, I, that's my tropical PB now. So uh, two, 226 is my tropical PB. And, oh, easy. Uh, and yeah, and so now I uh, want to go sub two twenty on that course. Tropical PBs, Moose. What do you think about this post baby PBs? Tropical PBs. I don't fan? love this. I don't like <laughs> this. From... <laughs> what? Why? Um. What? How hot was it? Tell me, and I'll tell you how good your run was. Oh, I never looked at the actual um the actual statistics. It was eighteen, wasn't it? Was. Then it was eighteen degrees. Eighteen degrees. Yeah, it was... So it was 28 degrees and like an 88% humidity or something. Yeah. So hard conditions. Yeah, except Moose, you had no sunlight. It was midnight. You guys well, ours was at 4.30, so ours was dark. 4.30 a.m.? Yeah, so I was up at 1 a.m. Ouch. Um, oh. but, but there's like big, so the thing that kills you is there's like big, I don't know if you've been to Singapore, there's big overpasses. So it's hot, but you've got like long, there's actual long hills. And also, because I, I, it's kind of raced like a championship race. So because I followed the front pack, one minute you're running 255Ks, like if say one person attacks off the front, the rest of the pack then chases them down. And then as soon as they come back, then the whole pack slows to like 325s. And then it happens again and again. And that just happened for the first 30 minutes. Yeah, on your Strava what it time? says feels like 28, 89% humidity. Yeah, there you go. There you go. What, what was the um, winner's time? Two fourteen. There's, oh, like, there's. They, I'm talking. There's two hundred three marathoners there. What were you seated in the race? Do you know? So there was twenty five elite runners. I was seated twenty three. Okay. Right. So, yeah. so oh, Reese, given given those conditions, why uh, did you go out at like, you know, PB pace and not adjust for the heat? 
just because, like, if you statistically look at that race, everyone slows down. So I knew, like, in your head, you know the race is going to slow down. So you're just hoping you can get to that point in the race where you're still in contact when it starts to slow down. And that that point needed to be probably about 25 k's in the race, and I just couldn't follow the pace to the 25 k mark. But they they're on like 2:10 pace until 25 k's, and they ran 2:14s. So they are like running 3:30s by the end of it as well. And an alternate um, an alternate way to do it would be to uh, not go out that hard. Yeah, but this is boring. That's boring. <laughs> no, you're like, who the hell wants to go to Singapore to run by yourself in the dark and then come through the field and be like, I had a good run. No, it's boring. <laughs> <laughs> and that's smart. It's smart and it's clever, but it's boring. Reese, we'll get back to you in a minute because Rachel's done well sitting there being patient for the last five minutes while yeah. we're talking to you. But Rachel, have we got you? I, I saw your video pop on before. I hope you can hear us all good. No good Brady, choice. you have cooked this. Oh, this, is what, this is how we do it every other week. Now we're going to have to talk to Reese about You guys are going to have to start throwing questions at Reese. <laughs> I'll see what's happening with Rachel. Ask him how dad life is, boys. Uh-huh. Well, yeah, all right. Well, how's, how's dad life? It's, <laughs> well, seems it's, like, not, seems it's like... not too bad, guys. I went to Singapore when you're yeah. only four weeks old. <laughs> how, so. Yeah, how'd you pull that off? Don't mind that. Big uh, present to come home with? Nah, no present. How did I pull this one off? Um... Winning Melbourne helped. Winning Melbourne definitely helped. Where oh, I was yeah. like, oh, yeah, I'll let you do it. Have a bit of a trip. I know. I just got a really cool wife, I guess. She just lets me kind of do stuff and chase my dreams. And, you know, she's happy to hang out with, with the little fella, little Oliver. And so, yeah, no, nah, she's cool. And you got flown over. Like, they looked after you? Yeah. So, like, they covered flights, accommodation. And even when I arrived, they gave me an envelope full of cash for food and I didn't even get through half of it <laughs> nice. so so that's what I mean like people some people were saying like why didn't you go to Valencia or Fukuoka and mm. stuff I'm like well they cost that cost me five thousand dollars just to try and attempt to run a 212 for my ego or I can go have like a really cool life experience for zero for dollars so I chose a life experience so next race or next marathon will be Osaka yes uh, yes, yeah. There, there, there may be a little local one in there beforehand. That's just more of a um, long run type thing. Which one's that? Uh, this is going to be Port, Port Ferry. Oh, okay. I know this one. We're Reece. just talking about it. We're just talking about it. We're just talking about it. Where is really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's selling out. It's selling out. Well, we're just talking no, about the running boom no, no, and how small, small time out. marathons are going well these days. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we travelled down to Port Ferry back in September and I did the park run and met a lot of the locals down there and they were just lovely people and they kind of invited me to come down. So Mm. it's just a beautiful spot in February, like beautiful beaches. So I reckon Port Ferry is the nicest town along that kind of Great Ocean Road as well. I I disagree with that. (laughs) Um, But... I'll, uh, I say the race is quite good, 2,000, and, and they're very happy to sign you up, I tell you. They were, talked to the organisers uh, on Friday last week, and they said, big signing. I said, oh, you got Bikili. Yeah. And they said, no, no, Melbourne runner, Liam Adams, you got Liam Adams. <laughs> and they said, no, no. I'm like, oh, who's left? Uh, Reese Edwards. Yeah, like, at the oh, bottom right. of the barrel. Oh. He's probably here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably would have entered myself anyway. <laughs> so, so Reese, for Osaka, what are your goals there? What What are you hoping to run time-wise? And are you looking to, like, change anything in training? Yeah, so my, my time goal, I, I just want to run a PB. So this is when I'll aim for that 2.12. So I've run 2.13 twice. So if I go sub 2.13... You know, that would be a huge success. Um, yeah, the things I'm going to change in training is kind of that not pure speed, but kind of like that speed endurance work. So I do a lot of kind of like tempo work and a lot of fast long runs. And just in the last kind of six to eight weeks, I've been doing more like pure speed work, like running K splits in, say, 250, but then having a couple minutes rest. So I'm going to go back to that kind of old school, almost like Telford, method of like maybe doing 
12 to 15 by a K, but only with like 45 seconds to a 60 seconds rest and trying to run them kind of 255, three minute K pace because I find I have like decent all out speed over like if I want him, if I'm recovered, but then, and I've got really, really good endurance, but I just struggle to run kind of low three minute Ks or high 250s for long periods. So I just want to improve that. Yeah. I think we've got Rachel McGuinness hearing us now, Rachel. Hi, yeah, sorry about the delay. That's all right. Reese has been uh, taking up all the airtime anyway. The boys have been doing well, throwing some questions at him. Thanks for being a part of this new project. Thanks to Mizuno. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Uh, it's been a year now since my little cameo on Road to Valencia, so excited to get involved again. Yeah, it's uh, good to hear your voice again. That was 12 months ago yesterday. Yeah. Bring back some memories. Valencia, where you ran the PB, 234? Yeah, 12 months ago today, exactly today. Okay, was it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What was it like watching the stream and stuff? Do you enjoy it? Yeah, it was good. It's um, good to see the Aussie female contingent like performing so well. It's crazy. Like Looking at the results, like, I think last year I came in, like I think it was the top 35, and this year I would have come, I think, 50th or 60th. So it's, it's crazy how well everyone is running at the moment. Yeah. And you're going all right, new coach, in Julian Spence. She'll be sharing a panel with him for eight weeks and Reese Edwards, so that will be interesting listening. But fitness is in a good spot? Oh, I don't know if the fitness is in a good spot. Like, I've only been back training now probably, like, just over two months. Um, so slowly getting there, back up to pre-injury volume, but just enjoying being, being back training. I'm trying to think about this marathon as more about enjoying the process rather than the outcome because I don't I don't, like, I genuinely don't know if I'll be able to get into PB shape, but... Uh, just going to try and enjoy the block. Yeah, and this year for you, like you bounced back from Valencia pretty good. You ran a real good, I remember, 5K track race, maybe like, was that end of Jan, early Feb, but then pretty much injury injury riddled like the whole way through? Yeah, so that that was, it was mid, mid-March mid and then exactly a week after that um, 5K PB, I got the stressy. So yeah, I think I was just probably redlining a little bit there. Um so yeah, I just had that one, only the one PB this year, but uh, that's okay. Like I'm glad to just be finishing off the year healthy and back running. So. Yep. And working with Mizuno for Osaka must excite you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love the shoes I've been running. Uh, well, I was running in the pro ones for um, quite a while um, before I was injured. And then, yeah, the, I like the pro twos as well. So uh, I feel like I haven't been able to get quite up to like the speed that they need uh, yet in my training, but hopefully that will come in the next few weeks. And yeah, it'll be good to, to race in them and excited about the trip over to Osaka and yeah, getting to see the HQ and everything. Rach, how's your training changed uh, since Julian's taken over the reins? It's it's definitely been a big, big adjustment, but I made the change for a reason, but it's like, it's, like a lot more caps on my heart rate and um, caps on pace for all my easy runs. Not that I ever did my easy runs like super quick anyway, but um, yeah, I definitely feel like I don't kind of go as hard in training, which I think when you're coming back from injury, sometimes you feel like you want to like, you know, hit it a bit hard because you haven't been able to do that for a while. But I think in the long term, this approach to training is definitely more sustainable and I don't want to be like on the sidelines with an injury like that again. So I think you were, you were off for a long time, weren't you? Like yeah. Mar- March to kind of November, or October. Yeah, uh, yeah. The stressy was first week of April, I think, and then yeah, I only did my first week of continuous running was the last week of August. So it was a long time. I did like a, a yeah run walking and then a month of like very easy jogging. I didn't start training again until. Uh, mid September, so it was a long, yeah, very long time to be out. Same stressy that Reese got, and he got his after mine, and then managed to train up for Melbourne, win Melbourne, and run Singapore. And mm. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think we want. <laughs> I never try. <laughs> Reese, probably... hey, I'm a I'm a physiotherapist, and I, I know how to how to return to running as fast as possible. I'm not I'm not a conservative. Sorry. I don't know what your inside tips are, but you need to share them. Ah, bones need to be loaded. <laughs> Bones need to be loaded, and every physio will give you the most ridiculous conservative program of your life, <laughs> and they'll waste three months of your entire life and you could be back racing. It's all about dry needling, isn't it, Reese? Oh, mate, don't set me down this pathway. <laughs> Reese, you got any dry, dry on needling? It? Dry needling can be used as an adjunct treatment, like in addition to, but by itself, it does nothing. <laughs> what do you reckon about recovery boots, Reese? Re- recovery boots? Yeah. It's like. 
so I don't know. Like you guys have probably got sponsors on this program that I have to watch my mouth. <laughs> yeah, we've got Mizuno, like, mate. Mizuno is your, your brand. Well, yeah, so I'd probably just walk around town in a pair of Mizuno shoes instead of buying your recovery boots personally. Um, hey, um, Bruce, I actually saw a photo of you in the um, – No, you didn't. The, yeah, <laughs> Wave Rebellion Pro 2s. Oh, yes, yes, you yeah. did see me in them. Yeah, I thought you were going to say recovery boots. <laughs> first, first thoughts? Yeah, good. So, like, I wouldn't agree to a pro, uh, like a project or anything like this if I didn't actually think the product was good. Like, I only believe – like, I'm not sponsored because I only want to use good products. So – for me to agree to this, I think that shows that I rate the shoes. Hey, so uh, I think they, I think they suit me well too. Question for all three of you: Statistics show that one of you won't make the finish line at um, Osaka in twelve weeks' time. I'll give you all ten seconds each to uh, state your claim on why that won't be you, Moose. Why are you the one not making the, or you are making the finish line? Oh well, for me, I've paid all my money to go there. <laughs> These two haven't paid a cent, so. I'm the one invested. That means I have to make the start line or it's going to cost me a fortune. Hey, hey, you, you just said you made the start line, but Brain's question was, will you make yeah, the finish yeah. line? <laughs> oh, wow. But, yeah. question, we've, got, we've, we've got a history of not making the finish line in Osaka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, true. <laughs> no, I've, I'm bound. You, you two both have egos to look after. My ego has gone now, so it's all about like just enjoying the experience. Rachel, why are you making the finish line? Well, I, I hope I make the finish line because uh, I've had a bit of a shit time with injury over the last year, but I reckon I've got hopefully one of the best coaches in the business and I really like dry needling, so I reckon that's going to get me. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> and race? Oh, well, I think, look at my track record. Good race, bad race, so I make the finish line. He, so he, I've got get, the biggest heart in the sport. Get there. <laughs> Start line will be the question mark for Reese. Yes, I, I agree with that one. The start line will be the question mark for me. Finish if I'm on the start line, guaranteed finish line. Who's coaching you, Reese? Anybody? No, I coach. I coach myself. Okay. Crazy. I wouldn't really call it. Coach, I wouldn't really call it coaching. I um, I guide myself. Zach and Newman tells us he coaches you. Is that lo- is that a lie? It's absolutely a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Reckons he gives you all the tips and like tricks on what to be doing. Well, what to be doing? What tips and tricks? Uh, yeah, I think everyone realizes I'm a lost cause, so no one, no one gives me tips and tricks. I'm wrapping this up here. Massive thanks yeah. to Mizuno for putting and funding this eight week program. As we said, it's going to be going out to the public uh, starting January the thirteenth for eight weeks, seven prior, one after. Uh, guys, chemistry's there after this quick ten minute chat. It's going to be fun to listen to. Thanks for being involved and thanks for your time tonight. Thanks, guys. All right. Cheers, guys. See you soon. Thanks, guys. All right, boys. We're going to uh, Fukuoka next. That was the next thing that happened in the weekend, wasn't it? Yep. Let's do it. Bruce, you're going to have to pull that in on that show. That could get a bit loose with Reese on there. I oh, I like this. I reckon it's going to be fun. If it's going I reckon out to the general some... public as well. We've got to be some, careful there. Yeah, some straight up uh, genuine arguments. Mm, Rachel McGinnis, doctor. Mm. And um, Reese, mm. physio, but unsure how he actually got his degree. <laughs> Yeah. I'm, a bit, I'm a bit worried the fact that Reese went all the way to Singapore and didn't adjust his paces at all. <laughs> That'd be boring, mate. 28 degrees. <laughs> and patrons, we do have some news about what the bonus series behind the paywall will be in the next couple of weeks. So you'll also be looked after there. Um, Fukuoka, Brett Robinson, you gave us a bit of a recap at the start of the show, Moose, but tell us about what else happened in there. Well, in the race? Yeah, well, the results. Well, he went out in the group with the leaders, obviously, and they were paced, and there was – Sandre Moen was in there. So that's – I think Christian tells everyone he actually coaches Sandre, but I think he's just his manager. And the big Norwegian fella, he's run 205 before, and I think Brett paced him at Fukuoka when he ran 205 last time. So a little bit of history on Fukuoka there. But, yeah, I think Brett went through in about – I think it was 63 flat – um, or 6301, and was looking good for the Australian record. Fair bit under it, really, at 206 pace, and perhaps that did catch up to him a little because he ran 6528 in the second half. Uh, I haven't seen or heard if the if if anything sort of specific went wrong. Um, but yeah, 20829, his second fastest time ever by an Australian. 
like who's run faster than that? Would De Castells run faster and Monas run faster? Correct? Yeah. So he's still run like only two men Australians have ever run faster than that. Geez, I'm banking on like 15 seconds there of not being Pat Carroll or someone. <laughs> um, Ed Goddard that. was in the race. He went through halfway. Whoa, off the top of your head, you blokes remember? Uh, 60, 66 something maybe, 67. Yeah, and he's, he's floated out to 219.55. Um, so broke 220, but I don't think he'd be celebrating that. That was, no. um, so yeah, that was no one else really in that role. Well, Brad Carlefelt ran 224 maybe. Um, he, he's probably the only other Australian that worth talking about. Yeah, and he kind of put on his social media a love-hate relationship with the marathon. Um, yeah, so he'll back up, I'm sure, pick something next year. Working in tandem to the Wave Rebellion Pro 2 is the second edition of the Wave Rebellion Flash. Using the same innovative smooth speed assist technology that runners have come to know and love with the Wave Rebellion Pro, the Flash provides a training alternative for intervals, fartlek, and easy days where you need just a bit more pop. The Flash and Pro 2 are now available online at mizuno.com.au and select running stores. And then the big news, fellas, Valencia kicked off about 6.30 yesterday. Huge hype, and it delivered the hype, didn't it? This is what we're expecting, weren't we, I think? Let's go to the females. Uh, Woknesh Degefa, she returned from childbirth to run at 2.15.51. Alme Zayana was second in 2.16.22, and Hibwat Gebrekenden was third. Oh, I think I Gebri Ekenden, yeah, I think I got that right. Should have backed myself there. Gebri Keenan. Mm, yeah, that's probably better. 217.59. The big news was the Australian ladies, as I said, Jen Gregson, first of the Australians in eighth overall in 223.08. Izzy Bat Doyle, 10th overall in 223.27. Lisa Waitman, 13th overall in 224.18. And Alwes Wellings, 26th in 225.47. Do we start with Jen, fellas? She jumps now uh, Lisa Mm -hmm. in the qualifying period of ranking times to move uh, second behind Sinead's national record. And that time of 2.23.08 is now number three on the Australian all-time list. So Benita Willis-Johnson must be sitting in number two, Bradley. Uh, Yes. Pretty impressive. Massive PB, PB by five minutes and 25 seconds. She knows how to race moose. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, were we expecting him to go this fast? That we, we weren't. Like, it's hard to talk just about Jen without talking about the others, really, given how the race played out. So how about we just talk about the race in general? And um, the, the, the girls think we're all together, basically. Jen, Izzy, Lisa, Eloise, same pack. And I saw an Instagram video, I think it was about three or five K, it looked like there was a hundred people in this pack. There, like you would have got lost from one side to the other. You would have no idea who was actually running in the pack or not, unless you were just right next to them, because that's how long it was and how like kind of massive the, the train was. So it just looks like an epic place to be. And it would be really hard in their position to, to back the pace off there. They did have a pacer uh, and the, the pacer I think was aiming for, 72 minutes through half just off the top of my head i think that was it maybe it was a little quicker but um yeah the girls were together and all we saw was the tracker wasn't it and i think they were together until 25 kilometers at least yep and then at 30k it was wellings uh, and gregson and waitman were ahead of izzy bat doyle by 10 seconds 35k wellings and gregson break away now 26 seconds ahead of waitman and Waitman, sorry, and Izzy Bat Doyle. And then 40k, Gregson was clear, 35 seconds ahead of Izzy Bat Doyle, then 25 seconds clear of Lisa Waitman, and Welling's another 22 seconds behind. So Izzy's kind of trimmed that to 19 seconds from 40k onwards. Um, yeah, I didn't know this is from Dave Tarbottom, this kind of stats here. He kind of went through the tracker and got all the statistics. So done well, Tarby. Yeah, it's done well. Because, yeah, the tracker I found at my end was, like, working fine, but then, like, it just would drop out. And, like, Izzy, for example, never had a 25K split, I think it was. So people getting concerned that something had happened there, but then all of a sudden popped up with a 35K split. So 
um, yeah, a bit of movement. Like it wasn't as, as you know, I thought it was just Jen, Izzy, um, Lisa, Eloise, but it sounds like there was, yeah, a few people kind of going back and forth. So the, it's just insane, this race in Australian distance running, t- for this to happen. I, I, I can't think of another race. Maybe last year's same day where we saw two Australian records go down. But I can't think of another race where there's just been four results so amazing um, that you like that it just sort of blows you away, doesn't it? Uh, it, it just doesn't seem real that they're, these girls are running that fast. Um, and and I, it, because all four of them did it, it really it kind of takes the polish away from the one that did it the faster. And then also Eloise running 225 getting an Olympic qualifier gets her, her polish taken away as well because because Jen's gone and run 223. Well, especially with Eloise when the fact that she was in, like, with Jen out in front of the other two, like, pretty late on into the race. And it would be interesting to know whether, you know, in hindsight she should have maybe just held back a little bit because yeah, supposedly she had to, like, actually stop in the last K and, like, lost, lost a bit more time. Um that being said, like, I, I'm not overly surprised by this because, well, a few, few reasons. Like, supposedly the weather was amazing, so that helps. But also, like, going into this race, it was sort of hyped as a bit of a trial in that you've already got, you know, Sinead and Lisa, you know, 221 and, and 223 low. So these girls have known for a long time now that to make the Olympic team, they're going to have to run these sort of times. And when you know that that's what you have to do, I feel like mentally you go away and you go, well, that's the level I need to be at. I need to do everything in my power to become that athlete. And so, you know, you look at Izzy, like Izzy, Izzy spent the last six months overseas. Like she has done absolutely everything, altitude camps, like lived the full professional life. Um, you know, Jen, every time you see things on Instagram, it's like, full Pilates it's like no no stone is left unturned with with Jen so I feel like they they knew that they had to run 223s to make the team if not faster and you know that this is what it sort of led to yeah they went talk sorry I was just gonna say it probably stacks up with what we see ladies doing in other countries who are similar abilities as well doesn't it you're like, talking yeah. Olympic finalists kind no of thing. I'm just like I don't know let's look at the five best American yeah. Women, let's look at the five best UK, Germany. I don't know, yeah. like, yeah, yeah I, I, yeah. I think this is just the standard of running now. Yeah, and it's just, think, yeah, like yeah. Charlotte Purdy is a good example. Kind of does the same train as these girls, and then it's just like runs similar over other distances, and she's running two twenty two. Yeah, well, those top five Americans that you're talking about, Brady, like they you know, quicker. Jen, yeah, but but Jen knows those girls really well and, and has trained and competed against them in the past. And so she would have the belief that, hey, I'm just as good as those people. And it's a bit like the it's a bit like the Roger Bannister four minute mile thing. It's like, you know, once people can see other athletes who they believe that at the same level at doing things, then they start believing it. And it is, you know, it is possible then to happen. The goalposts move and when you go to Valencia, it is very easy to see how it's easy to move them. Like you explain that pack moose, this yeah. course is flat. This is set up perfectly. There's pacemakers. There's men around everywhere. Like even someone today, um, you know, wrote into our DM saying like, "Oh, will they now?" Because that's the next question. Like, what now? Like, Izzy's got a. She's twelve seconds behind Lisa in that third spot. Like, she's got to reload and go again if she wants to qualify or jump Lisa in the the time rankings. Like, and someone said, "Oh, will she go to London?" I'm thinking, no, nah, I'd be getting something similar to Valencia, like where there's men around, huge packs, flat courses. And know. there there is no nothing similar to Valencia anymore. Valencia is Valencia. sits above it, sits yeah. above all. Do you think it's something like a Hamburg or something though? Like, I'm trying to think something that's it's flat. Not, Val- we know Valencia yeah, is I know. different, but it's I think different. you can get something in between, like say a London a women's only race, and you can get stuck by yourself and maybe yeah, get some yeah. poor weather. And it ain't London, yeah. That's yeah. For sure. So London's not there, but I yeah, I think there's. Somewhere in Japan or, yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. I was just trying to think of options today. But I don't think London, the traditional place where a lot of these ladies would go in April, mm. would be the option because you need to now squeeze everything out of it. Like it's yeah. that's what you have to do now to, to get on this team. And that's why these girls are definitely in the box seat because, one, 
like as we know now, Valencia is the place to go. Plus, they had the perfect weather, whereas there's no other there's no other marathon that's going to be this deep where you're likely to get perfect weather as well. Um, but you're saying Brady about you know the the goalposts often change when you're in Valencia because you know you think you know special things happen and you can like lose your game plan. Mm. I feel like that that's more for runners like us where we don't have our designated pacemakers, whereas the group that the, these girls were in, it's like, well, they knew what the plan was going to be for at least the first half of the race. Oh, I and ran so, solo for like 15K that, last year. Like yeah, where, yeah, where you fall yeah. is still different, yeah. So the the goalposts don't change for the first probably 25K of this race for these girls. It's what happens after 25K. The drink tables were so much better this year as well. Did you see them? Like some of the elite guys, there was one drink per table and they'd set up like 40 tables. Like, and at one stage I did catch a glimpse where there was an Australian flag and said, you know, Wellings or something like that. So I was concerned they weren't going to get drinks because they weren't in that um, top elite um, mm. yeah, section, but they still got their drinks and stuff, which is another reason to go there. Yeah. It, it, it really shows the benefits of being in a competition as well. Mm. Like rather than let's, let's say Lisa, well, she did right. Goes to Berlin. Um, there's no other Australians there for her to really race against, worry about no one is going to be ahead of her, uh, potentially taking a spot of hers in the Olympics. And so it doesn't, like chasing times is very different to racing people. And when you get ladies like this who are upper, upper echelon elite athletes, they are so competitive. Like they are absolute animals with how competitive they are. And you can see it in their personalities. It's just who they are. And you don't get there without it. But you put them all on the same start line and there's a different level achieved. It was a it's not a storm. time trial. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah. it's great to watch, and we got to see what happens there. And like you, you're going to see more and more ladies heading over to Valencia. That's for sure. Everyone in general heading to Valencia. <laughs> yeah, like... get a spot early. Get in the lottery. You're yeah. going to have two twenty-five girls going in the lottery just in case they don't get the yeah, spot. Coming off the start line, forty-five yeah. seconds behind. Yeah, I think mm. that was there was some UK runner who like went to the Olympics or something that was coming off one of those yeah start lines. Um, what's it mean now, boys? So Sinead's still got the Australian record and in the box seat, you think. But, you know, I I wouldn't say three, four, and five are, like, set yet. No, it's it's still open. Like, I I can't see two people going faster than Sinead. So I would say Sinead is is safe. Um, That being said, like, I think the way, well, Jen and Izzy, like, I I don't think uh, Sinead's Aussie record is – it is super safe over the, you know, I don't think it's one that's going to stand for 10 years. Um, I can see, you know, this current crop, you know, Jen and Izzy improving because that was what, that was Jen's second marathon. Yes, yeah, that's right. So, so, you know, and it's, yes, it's what a minute, a minute and a half or so that she needs to find. Um, but I think, you know, in the next couple of years, Jen will be able to do that if she stays in one piece uh, as it, you know, right now, although Izzy beat Lisa, I don't think I don't think that is enough to knock Lisa off that third spot at the moment because Lisa has run faster in the qualifying period and Lisa also beat Izzy at a major championship. So I think Izzy has to run faster um, to knock Lisa off. And Hypothetically, then ob- sorry to interrupt. What happens if they both go to the same next one and Izzy beats her again? Mm. Gets then, a two-one head-to-head. Yeah, then that probably opens up more discretion like, call. yeah i think the selectors would be in a better position to say like give izzy the spot because she's beaten the last two times yeah um but championships but, diff- like yeah she did it in a hot championships which paris is going to be a Budapest. Yeah. to lisa did so that's going to be worth a bit of extra weight you yeah. think but Even i think for olympics yeah, yeah. And i think off yesterday like that's not enough for izzy um, you know, I, I think the selectors would. I think the selectors at the end of the day will probably just pick the three fastest on times, as, assuming they're all all fit. As I kind of think they should, though. Mm. Yeah. Like, I, I make a policy, make it simple. Know what the deal is. Okay, you've got this time to this time. Whoever runs fastest, you're in. Yeah. Easy. It's it, it, it's cut and dry then, and then no one can compl- no one can complain. Yeah, that's right, and no one gets to put a person. No one gets to bias it in any way. As soon as you put it in the hands of people, then it's then things go wrong. 
but it also now puts you know like you look at um ellie and and jess sitting home last night you know obviously they're they're pretty good friends with these girls but like at the back of their mind they're like oh i hope they don't have great days because <laughs> so it make my job a little bit easier at the next marathon but now it's like they know that they pretty much have to run like sub 223 probably to be guaranteed a spot yeah Which, but um do you know what though neither of them are probably sitting there thinking oh these girls are so much better than me uh they're like i can't do that they these girls have beaten these yeah like they they've been competitors with them for five ten years yeah they don't just, fit. yeah yeah and that was getting back to the point that i made before where like jen sees these american girls that she's raced for years mm-hmm. going well they're no better than i am and they're running 218 like you know i, I should be able to run 218 oh carly um, thackeray a couple of weeks ago run 222 yeah, Fucking, uh, exactly. Hey, look at right. that. Yeah. yeah, that's why I that was my first comment to you, Moose. I'm like, ah, oh, if they can do that, so can Ali. Like, that being said, though, wouldn't hit the paint. That button. being said, though, yes, that, that's, that's where their, you do it, though. That's what they're thinking, Moose. But you know, like, you need a lot to go right mm. for, for for Ellie and Jess to run sub two twenty three. Like, yes, the mental side is strong, but you still need everything to go right on the day for them to do that. Yeah, 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 you do, and it's it. Like nothing changes with training, does it? Like we're doing. If there was, if there were things to add, and there was a special secret source of training, we'd already be using it. It's not like you can go, oh, we need to get fitter now. Let's do this as well. It, so there's nothing really you can do from a training perspective, but you have to shift your gaze upwards and and work out that that pace three thirty, three twenty eight is not going to be fast enough to do it. Yeah, well, that's the only thing that changes in training moves is your marathon sessions are now aimed at, you know, your, your marathon reps are at basically 223 flat pace, not 225, which potentially would have got you in previously. But but I don't even agree with that because and you're not going to... You exactly. Mm. You can't just say, oh, well, I guess we're going to do reps at 255 tomorrow because we need to be faster. Like, we, we you have to realise where, where you are, like Brady said. And mm. if you do the training right... And you get to the end point and it spits out and you'll go, all right, this is as fit as we yeah. possibly could be. And if we're a 224 girl today, that's as fit as we could do it. If we're a 222 girl, amazing. But Yeah, yeah but I guess at the start of the block, like you, you, you're you not starting off at those sort of paces, but, you know, if, all you had, if, if you knew all you had to do was like 225 to qualify, you, you know, your end goal for training is probably going to be a little bit like on the – the more conservative side, whereas like where you want to be at your end goal is doing stuff at 223 marathon pace. Yes, you've got to train to where you are at the moment, but if you're if you're not able to do, you know, feel comfortable at 223 flat marathon pace, then you're probably not going to make, you know, you're not going to be able to do it on the day. Yeah, but that means you're not going to be able to do it, isn't it? Yeah. If, so Cause you could if you're risk in... not even getting the start line if you go too aggressive. Yeah, yeah. If you're not, if you can't do it in training and it doesn't feel comfortable, then you're not going to be able to do it on the day. Yeah. But I guess my like, I'd say there's a philosophical change in perhaps approaching the marathon now. Like instead of every time you've got a decision up until the marathon, there's a risk versus reward balance argument debate going on about what decision you make. And if you're trying to hit 225, perhaps the the decisions bias and swing towards the conservative, the the no risk. And uh, if if you have to push the limits a little, maybe a, a few more of those decisions get swung to the riskier. Mm. But yeah, let's take that risk. So mm. that's I think what's going to change the most. This is where the managers make their money for me. Like this is where you need to get in the right race because that's that's the I think that's the biggest thing that can impact the performance. Yeah, yeah. Well, that yeah, you're right. Like, you can get it, Ali, a certain fitness, but if uh, that whole perfect pack, males around, flat course, good weather, that can be all weather, controlled yeah. by the manager. Weather's a weather's a big factor in the marathon. Yeah, like, but you, you can you, find you, races that have been good nine out of the last ten years, mm-hmm. and you know Valencia has been good. You know what's it been good for? What, six yeah. out of the last six years. Yeah, like it's been I good mean, every year it's been on. I think. Oh, that one year, Klaus. Nah, the one year Klaus in that did it was really windy. Oh really? Remember, yeah, two thousand twenty-one. I reckon that was or twenty. Okay. Yeah, they got pretty windy that day. But that's the only like. But I'm saying you got to look at the stats here and be like, all right, where has been perfect? 
you know, eight out of the last 10 years. Yeah. Where you're going to have a whole lot of men around you. Like, when do you start going, hey, where have we got four or five training partners you can send to the same place? Yeah, well, we kind of got that set up. Who's sacrificing a race to take Ali through to 40K? So is that you? So do you do that, Moose? Do you sacrifice yourself in Osaka? I'll do it. How much you got, Moose? I think we're going to have a couple of others that can do it, to be honest. Um, I'll a, do it. I'm serious. I'll do it. All right. I'll Let's do lock it. you in. I reckon we you bring, got them. bring Ali to the silos for a training camp for a month. We do some oh. hills around <laughs> Colburn Abbon, and then I take her over and we take her through in 2.22.30. Hmm. Actually, what's the have... Australian record? Let's go for that. You can sleep in my um, gym if you like. <laughs> That's your offer. <laughs> we'll talk uh, about it closer today, but if yeah, if, if if I have a hiccup and I'm not in the great shape, I'll do it. If she's going to a circle, I don't even know where she's going. Um, yeah, we're not decided yet. It's going to be fascinating to watch. Anything else on Valencia, boys? King Kenny, uh, how good was Bikili? Chapter guy, love that he finished, but he was in a world of pain. Do we mention Tommy? Tommy can I probably should give him a mention, should oh, we? Come forty nine in two eleven. We haven't even mentioned any of the men yet. That's how much we love female distance run on this show. Sisse well, Lima got the win in 201.48. Alexandra Matusio, he was second in 203.11. And DeWitt Walday, he was third in 203.48. The boys went crazy from like, was it 10 to 15 or 15 to 20? They ran like a 14.08. King Kenny Bikili let him go. He still went through in sub 61 half marathon and got dropped. And then people started to blow. How good was the pacemaker though? He went to like 31, 32K. He's got a future in marathoning. And Sisse Lima was just like, keep throwing it on the coals, fellas. Let's keep rolling. He was the only one that survived it. Was it a course record in the end too? Uh, yeah. That was, yeah. That was quicker was, than Calvin Kipton run there last year. It was, yeah. Pretty amazing. Yeah. But this bloke's been around forever though. Mm. Yeah. It seems like didn't it. Didn't they go through half in like 60-30 or something? Something like that. It was just, it wasn't much over 60 minutes through halfway. Yeah, it was pretty quick. Yeah. Mm. And Tom DeCano, our man from Shoe Gags, 49th in 2.11.51. Runs like a, what, nearly a three-minute PB. Um, he's, that's pretty impressive. The guy's got two kids, owns his own business, busy man. Yeah. Like, he's had a few injury niggles and stuff and got, like, it's not like he's got perfect training on Strava. This is this is a big win for the blue-collar workers out there, Moose. Mate, you can't <laughs> just get, like, a bit of leave from your work when you own your own business. That's just not how it works. He doesn't have anyone that works for him. There's no one in there doing pod work while he's uh, off training. Like his business is him; it runs off him. So, and he's got a mortgage. So he's not he's training in odd hours, and yeah, it's um, it's massive kudos to 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 Tommy. And it, it, the night before, he said, "Oh, this, these are the pace groups, and the last one's two eleven something." And I'm like, "Oh, you don't go with that, do you?" He's like, yeah, why, I'm go, come all the way to Valencia. I'm going to go with that. I'd rather have a crack than uh, and blow up to 2.14 than run, fucking t- try to run 2.13 or something. And I thought, oh, Gets I, fit uh, quick, doesn't he, as well? Because yeah. like it wasn't that long ago that he had a bloody car roll over his foot, drive over his foot, and he was, he was busted. <laughs> I know. Uh, and yeah. he gets sick all the time, too. All the time. Mm. He was with you, Moose, until what? Thirty-five k at Sydney. Oh, don't don't bring that up, Brady. Moose yes. will start. Moose was like, oh yeah, if well, I was, was only two now, months ago, wasn't it? Yeah, Moose I was with him. Yeah, two Tom's got fitter to since then. Moose has it. Two oh eight guy on the weekend. I reckon in two minutes I was with him to him, and maybe ninety seconds to Tom, who's a two eleven guy. So I don't know if you do the math on that. I'm thinking maybe two thirteen, back to two fourteen. Yeah, I reckon. That- that's like a moose on the loose topic. That you know, trying to work out what you'd run based on what others have run. Well, how else are you going to do it? Well, one, right. one shout out we missed. Uh, Patreon is Jordan Donnelly. They are get past guests on Shoe Geeks. Works for the uh, On Shoe Company. Ran two twenty seven, I believe, and pretty good for an eight hundred meter runner. Yeah, it was good. Big fan of the show too, isn't he? After you, did he know of us before you interviewed him? Highly doubt it. Oh, we've really converted him, haven't we? Yeah. Good. A, a good comment on your Strava saying get the get the Norwegian bloke on. <laughs> Fuck, I laughed at that. Which he wouldn't uh, know the history of Chris O too much, I wouldn't think. But Oh, you probably listened to that monthly episode. and <laughs> He's got on board. 
I gotta talk to we gotta get, chat to Chris though. Do you, want, do you wanna do the monthly? You can do it if you want. No, I'm not doing it. You you can deal with that. Ah, uh, let's go to an Australian record. We've been going for nearly oh, two hours. Or what else you got, break. folks? Oh, just on Valencia and some doping news. So, Sehe um, Gemachu from Ethiopia, she was meant to run the marathon, um, but has been provisionally suspended due to her biological passport showing evidence of doping. So, she's part of the NN running crew, um, has run like 14, 29, 30, 19, 65 flat, and 216, 59 for the marathon, and finished second at Tokyo this year. Um, so yeah, she wasn't at Valencia because she's uh, provisionally suspended. So the big names that were coming at the end of November is this it? We've got one name, one doping case. Well, no, this that's is Ethiopia. Coming, that's said, Ethiopia. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was Kenyans. Yeah, okay. So the month's been and gone. Nothing's happened. I've got on your whispers there, mate. And N wouldn't like this. That wasn't whispers, wasn't it? Like an actual quote from the the like doping people in Kenya that said we're releasing this. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it wasn't a whisper, mate. Whispers are things that generally aren't true. I think you mentioned any whispers, though. Did I? Yeah, maybe I did. Um, Kai Robinson goes out and breaks the Australian record for indoors. He ran 13.06 in Boston. Ollie Hoare held the record there of 13.09. Kai's coming back to Australia, boys. I was talking to him when I was doing some Zadapec research. Asked him if he was coming for Zadapec. He said, no, nah, I've got this race in Boston instead. You've got to finish some studies, but then he's coming back. I reckon he said Feb or March, didn't he, Croaks? Do you read that DM? Yeah, back, back, for, yeah, back for Nationals. National 5K. You get some points, which oh, is good. Yeah. And uh, another Australian record, Marnie Ponton, broke their National 50K record up at the Gold Coast 50K race. She ran three hours, 15.46, took down Steph Austin's record of three hours, 17. Can we skip listening to question, fellas? I'm yeah. going for two yeah. hours. got to do it. got to do it. I haven't got whispers. Moose, you got a moose on the loose? Yeah, I've got um, – actually, I want to bring something up with you that I keep thinking about. You put it on your Strava a while back, and I, I reckon I think about this every Sunday at about 9.30 to 10 o'clock when I finish my long run, and you had a photo with four drinks. It was – no, three drinks. Oh, yeah. Gatorade, yep. Yep. soft drink, and milk. Yep. And you said, which, which one first? Yep. That is a f- – oh. I've been having this problem for, for 10 years in running, which one first. I, I can't work out which way to do it. If you, if you dump the milk in first and then put soft drink on top, that's a, just a hard no, right? Like that's gonna, that makes the milk like fizzle in your guts or something. And you're not, when you, once you drink the milk, you're full. You don't really feel like drinking anything else. So, but you actually probably need the Coke and you need the Gatorade. But by the time you drink the Gatorade and the Coke, if you do those two first, you end up with being too full as well. You can't take any more liquid on. And then your milk's destroyed. You're not going to like your milk anymore. So I think what, this is how – you boys tell me how you do it, but this is how I do it now. I go soft drink immediate, and then I put the milk on top of the soft drink, and then the Gatorade, that's for later in the day. I can't do a Gatorade. I can't do three. It's just not a possible thing. Mm. So we can agree you can't do all three. Uh, yeah. You can't. Yeah. My eyes were too big for my belly when I went to the server. I'm like, oh, one of those, one of those, one of those. Had to buy all three. Croaks, what are you doing? Uh, so, yeah, I would never do all three. For me, it would depend on time of the year. So if it's hot, I would avoid the milk straight away and I would do the other, the, the sugary one, so the, the Coke or the Gatorade, and then I'd do the milk. Whereas if it was a freezing cold day, I could probably stomach the milk first and then go the, the Coke or the Gatorade after that. Because you notice like those hot runs, you want something like that, like a, like Slurpee or that sort of Coke Gatorade taste more than milk. If I tell you run. that I had 40 minutes to go in the car before I got home. So drink like, them all? Well, you've got to get the protein in. So that's my argument there. Oh, I drink them all within pretty short space of time. But if it's hot, I would want the the Coke or the Gatorade first. You don't need the protein immediately. Protein comes later. Protein's fine to come a bit later. You need the, the carbs are better off immediate, I reckon. Mm. I, I went the milk and the Gatorade together. 
Oh, like a sip of that, put the lid back on, oh, drive no. a few more oh, Ks, oh. sip of that other well, one. It was like a blue Gatorade, wasn't it, too? That's not yeah. even an option, and then, right? And then I got to the end of both of those, and I'm like, oh, my stomach's cooked here, and the Coke was later on the afternoon. Had to put it in the, um, in the fridge when I got home. You're an odd cat. Well, I commit, you know... I'd opened both of them, committed to those two, so I'm like, there's no way I'm committing to the can of Coke, and I just <laughs> sipped along on both of them. Guess how many gels I had on Sunday? I've been, I've been going hard on gels as well. Four? Five. I had four gels during my long run. Of like 25 and, grams? And I had two of, them, two of them within the last 40 minutes. And it was still a that, rough day. You, you don't really feel like having a, like a, mm. a, a, a soft drink immediately after that with those gels there. That can do, like, I can go down. Like, gels are fine for, for most part. I do deal with them in races. After the race, you expect to feel a bit gross. But doing four on a Sunday and then coming up, going to lunch afterwards, knowing you got four gels that you've thrown down, it's just it's not quite as satisfying after a long run as it is a, a race. Do you know what the best gel is, Moose, at the moment? Fluid cola. No. Nah. Pure, pure sports fluid cola. That is it. Precision That's the ninety gram. Just sip, well, just, 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 you get one gel in your hand, you get ninety grams. Then I just have one other one in my pocket, and I'll just be chewing on that for like. An hour, ninety grams you go carry, down like that. That means you have to carry the gel. Yeah, and then I put it back in my shorts, and then I just pull it out, twist the top off, have a bit more. Like it's just easy to get down, and you get ninety in that one pouch. That's the same as carrying yeah, nearly I, four smaller gels. No, it's the same as carrying three, which is exactly it. It's three gels. How many gels are thirty grams? Precision. A lot. Yeah, but other, the, but Morton's only twenty five, isn't it? Endura yeah. twenty five. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying seven, is that's only 28. 75 for three. What's 28 winners? <laughs> yeah, precision's good. I had one on the weekend. Precision mm. is good. I, I do enjoy it, but it ain't no pure f- fluid gel. Yeah, I haven't tasted them. I'm just talking yeah. about like convenience. Yeah, yeah. Just, well, yeah, it's not that convenient to dump a massive big container in your shorts. Get better half tights. Don't even know it's there in the little lemon split ones. I'd buy I'd buy one if there was a medium in the country. You know, you know I've been get, chasing one for six yeah. months. Get, you, get you some sent over from Vancouver. No whispers this week. Let's wrap up the show. Um, what's coming up, Crokes? Selling any more houses this week? <sighs> no, mate. Just a um, bit of training. <laughs> might, uh, might go to yeah, – might take the kids to, like, Carol's on Saturday if it's not raining. Oh, yeah, we're doing that Sunday. Mm. Three Christmas parties this weekend. It's hey, Moose, on, you, you got a like singing? Moose, you got a Christmas tree up? <laughs> your kids like to sing? Moose, you got a Christmas tree up? I hope, I, hope, I hope you're not putting a Christmas tree up this year. There is a Christmas tree up. Oh. You know what? I had this conversation the other day. I said, I, I love seeing my daughter happy, and she absolutely adores Christmas at the moment. Santa, she's only two. Yeah. And she's like Santa and the tree, and she likes this and that, anything shiny. And I'm like, oh, I don't care. Put it up. Let her, let, let her stop yelling at me for a while. Now that you're a dad. Yeah. What if we, remember, remember if we brought this up a couple of years ago about, oh, yeah, put your Christmas tree up, Brady? You would have yeah. got into us about, oh, yeah, why are you celebrating Christmas? Are you Catholic? Why are you doing that? <laughs> Well, maybe yeah. I haven't. I, I have to expose her to a few different cultures, so <laughs> we might do all the holidays this year. Uh, she can pick which one she likes best. What about when you try to explain like the concept of time, though? I'm like saying to Hudson, I'm like, it's twenty days away, twenty, yeah. and it's just like, so tomorrow? I'm like, no, no, twenty, <laughs> like, twenty days. I'm like, not quite up to that. I think that's like grade one curriculum at school to get to number twenty, but yeah, yeah. trying to get that across at the moment's hard. We had a good one the other day. He stubbed his toe the other day. Just went, Jesus. And I was just like, okay, yep, 20 days and you will be talking about Jesus as well. So good learning moment there as well. Got to watch what I'm saying around the house. What are you doing, Moose? Christmas tree, I've asked you that. Let's wrap the show up. Two hours, we're done. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, Chris O, Toby, the monthly. Between now and next week, I'll work on that. Yeah, when, get him on. when shoe geeks, Moose? Yeah, get uh, Tommy when on. Tommy, gets, Tommy left early. He was gone. I had it planned this week, and then he took off. So he's living on the other side of the world. Yeah, it's but hard, yeah, we'll get him on. Get we'll, get we'll a good good week. recap out of him. Yeah, that'll be worth it. Talk about it. the shoes that he saw Talk out there. Oh, actually, I think talking about product, we got our Jimmy Friend and friends coming on the end of this episode, don't we? Pretty sure we do. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Actually, maybe hold off one more. One more week. 
Yeah, hold off. Cut. You might have to cut that. Sorry. I no, no. I can, but, I can just put it on. That's just what's coming. Get excited for next week. Jimmy's right, friends and friends. Right. Got it a week after. Oh, yeah. You know they've already, re- they've already okay. recorded it. You know that, don't you? Yeah, I understand. Okay, okay. All good. All right. See you, fellas. Have a good week. See ya. Bye. From January 13, join the Inside Running Podcast and Mizuno in documenting the journey of recent Melbourne Marathon winner Reese Edwards and 234 marathoner Rachel McGuinness on their push to the Osaka Marathon in February. All right, welcome back now to the running company presenting Jimmy Friend and Friends for the Inside Running Podcast. It's a it's a show where the name still needs work, but um, we'll um, we'll work on that for the next month. Show that was meant to be monthly, it's probably blown out to two months. Um, but that's what happens when you get a big guest like this on. You need to work around their schedule. So um, I'd like to introduce to for the first time for the free to air listener, the manager of the running company Geelong and star of Road to Valencia 2022 and the monthly podcast with Brady and Christian, Toby Mende. How are you tonight, Tobias? I'm well, James. Um, yeah, just. Got off the uh, bike trainer just then, and I'm pretty tired, but I'm feeling much better now I get to see your face. Well, it's been a long day. Well, I saw you this morning at track, but it's a long day on Tuesday when you're not in the office. So, yeah, it's nice to um, be able to catch up, and and then, yeah, I'll be um, sick of you by Wednesday afternoon without any doubt. Um, I'm just going to bring the bring the free-to-air listener up to date on a couple of results that I've got written in front of me here. Um, I've got your 3K PB at 8.05. And your marathon PB at two nineteen eleven, so those two those two results are split by eleven points on the IAAF profile of Toby Mende. Um, I'd like to play a guessing game with the listeners, but as Michael Kernahan brought to your attention very quickly after the three k, it's actually one thousand and twenty four points in front of your marathon at one thousand and nineteen. On the back of those, I would ask you to first of all rate your best performance you've ever had. And then tell us what your favourite shoe of all time is. Or oh, I think it would be close between that 805 and then also run for the kids earlier this year. 2023, um, yeah. But I think I'm going to go with the 805 because I just, I've got no business running that fast. I'm not that kind of athlete. So <laughs> yeah, it says it. And it's official <laughs> distance and track as well. Run for the kids. Um, being a little hilly and, and a funky distance at like 14.6 or whatever it is, it doesn't doesn't show up in the record books unless you go to the website so it's a good one to um to have at the top of your top 10 performances on the IAAF and uh what sh- did you wear an endorphin elite for a run for the kids yeah I was in an endorphin elite for that one yeah. and would you say that's favorite shoe of all time or have you got a have you got one harking back from the past a little bit oh, I reckon I have to go back to the lunar racer oh still yeah, still the Lunar Racer. Shit. Some good memories of that but from back in the day. Yeah, you've still got that pair that you got from Laddie as well, pink and yeah. yellow. Yeah. yeah, I got that pair. I'm pretty sure um, Tommy DeCanto got me onto them back in the day. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. That's some shoe geek stuff. <laughs> we'll um, we'll move on to uh, what the what the next race is for you. Um, obviously, coming into summer, probably a good time to do a lot of training for a for a marathon somewhere down the line. But have you got a have you got a race penciled in for the next few months? I'm going to go to Geelong 5K uh, Road Champs uh, Dawn Busters. Dawn Busters, okay, okay. Move down to the Geelong region cross country, and now coming down to the 5K Road Champs. There'll be a few. There'll be a few names down there that'll be disappointed to see you because they won't be able to get themselves a a $200 wharf shed voucher. You might take that off them. Um, <laughs> thinking of the the Pete Kerrs and the Matt Gunthers of the world, and maybe Hutchie as well. Um, but yeah, that's a ah, it's a fun race. It's um. It's cheap and easy and supports the local cross country, cross country guys. So it's um yeah that'll be fun. And yeah, it's a week I'll, before yeah. Will you do the Surf Coast Track Meet as well? Yeah, I'll, I'll do the five thousand there. Yep. Um, all going well with training, obviously. Yeah, 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 perfect. And um yeah, I guess like we'll do a quick little recap of like the last. I guess it's probably a month now of product that we've seen in the store. Um, we'll both sort of talk a little bit about a. We'll get into it now. The, the Coros um, heart rate monitor that it just dropped. It's a it's a new product. We've we've sold through it pretty quick, um, and it's rather than a chest strap, we're talking about an armband, um, optical optical heart rate. Have you used yours just for running or bike as well? 
Uh, I've used it on, yeah, running and bike. Yep. And, like, I think I was saying to you in store, like, I wasn't sold on it. Like, I don't have any issues with the chest strap. And from what I know, they're always um, more accurate. But I did testing on it when I was on the trainer at home with the computer on my bike and then uh, with Zwift hooked up with one of each heart rate and it came out pretty much the same. Yeah. So I've been pretty impressed with it so far. I like the idea of um, being able to compare the two. I've toyed with the idea of wearing two watches and two heart rate monitors <laughs> on a run, but I decided to um, avoid it. I agree. I think like I was a bit um, – with the Polar that I think a few people have had a couple of issues with and just the optical heart rate in general, I was a bit more – sort of inclined to think oh maybe it'll work better on the bike where you're not moving so much but um it's just pretty comfy like i just wear it on the outside of my outside of my bicep um chest strap to me like it it probably gives me more grief than most just because i got like skin condition on my chest that it kind of rips up at um i know a lot of women who wear like a sports bra and stuff have issues with chest straps um digging in and it, it can chafe and it's just it gets a lot sweatier for me under my chest than it does around my arm. So it doesn't to me rub or, or get, um, get chafy at all. Um, have you had any issues with this arm strap and have you ever any, have, have you had any issues with the chest strap ever in terms of accuracy or having it drop in, drop out, anything like that? Um, I mean, I've not had issues with either of them yet. It's pretty early days with, um, the arm band, but like, so far, it's been pretty much spot on. I've never looked at it after a run and gone, well, oh, that doesn't seem right. And like, yeah. because it's early days, I keep checking it against elevation and stuff, and it always comes out looking really good. And like, I've not had any sort of chafing issues from chest straps, which is why for me, like, I still would use that for most workouts and things. But also, not everyone's built, you know, 60 kilos with um, <laughs> like ringing wet. Yeah, like I've not had issues with chafing like ever. Um, so it's just, I, it's, there's obviously demand for it. We sold them all in three days. Yeah, that's right. Um, and also on that, like we're getting a few more hopefully in the next week or so. Um, so yeah, if you like have any issues with your chest strap, it's probably the biggest thing is if you have dramas with the chest strap, if it, if it's too tight, gives you a stitch, rubs, anything like that, that's probably the reason to get it. And like you said, you'll probably wear your chest strap for your threshies and stuff, but it's always nice to have the option of whacking it around your arm. Um, That's just the first piece of product review that we wanted to go through because we've both been using it for two weeks now pretty much. And like we've both had pretty similar experiences. The other two things we want to chat about is like two new shoe drops from the last month, which um, to start with, like you grabbed a Vimero on the weekend um, and like chucked it straight on for a long run. And like Jules has obviously spoken about it a bit. I'm not sure if Tom had one, but he was speaking about he was pretty excited to get his foot in one. Would you um how did you find that shoe straight away when you go out of the box into a long run? It's not something that like everyone's pretty comfortable doing, but obviously you've worn a lot of shoes and, and you put it on and felt like it was enjoyable to begin with. Yeah, I mean the big thing for me on this one is this the fit is so much better than any sort of Nike mileage shoe that has been for maybe the last four or five years. Especially the previous Vimeros. Oh, that thing was awful. Um, yeah, and then now they've gone away with the air zoom unit, so it doesn't feel kind of like a little bubble underneath the forefoot. Yeah. you just got a nice sort of layer of um, Zoom X, and then you got, I think it's Cushlon underneath it. Cushlon below, yeah. And it's just, like, surprisingly stable as well. I, I think that's the thing I noticed first yeah. up in store. I think, yeah, before I even put it on, just having it on customers' feet, next to shoes that are like a like a ghost or an 880 that aren't overly like plush and soft and bouncy but um performing in a similar manner to to shoes like that um like for a pretty wide range of of runner as well like they haven't been like just for people doing bulk mileage like you've taken it off road a little bit jules running the trails in it a little bit it's like not overly um unstable because of the the zoom x either on those type of surfaces which has been um, yeah, pretty, I guess, helpful and also like durability. I think the, there's a decent outsole with little, it's almost like a mini lug pattern, but um, I think like durability would just a little a waffle daily. sole on the bottom of it. Yeah. And I think that is going to provide a little bit more durability for, 
for a lot of people that maybe are finding these days like shoes going a little softer and trying to strip weight um, are probably compromising a little bit on like the the hard wearing nature of the way that shoes sort of once were. So it's kind of nice to see that as well. Um, it sits on 10 mil offset, like Toby said, Zumex and um, Zumex and Cushlon, which provide like cushion and stability, which is a little combo that's a little bit difficult to come by at times. Um, when you're thinking of a stable neutral kind of trainer, like the foams tend to be slightly denser and maybe not as um, responsive and maybe not as fun to run in, but uh, this shoe kind of ticks the both boxes of, of safe and fun, um, and it will be that exactly for a lot of a lot of people in a lot of long runs um, to come, I would imagine, from yourself. And if you put on the new Cloud Eclipse from On as well, that's probably the one other shoe that we want to touch on a little bit, just being um, it's a brand-new model and a release that's just been recent uh i've just done some running in it on the treadmill um at work um and like it felt pretty good like i didn't get the hype with the cloud monster like i had one i liked it not as much as you like you just go on about yeah. that thing yeah i um, quite enjoy that patty's worse but i do quite enjoy that shoe <laughs> but I, I like this one because it feels like it actually feels soft i think the um having the plate sort of underneath the like further down like pretty much exposed on the bottom yeah just gives it an overall softer feel and i kind of like that it still has that nice rocker and like rigid feel um, which is why you love it because you have yeah yeah love for all things stiff and rocker basically correct and i think the plate being further down paired with um the cloud tech phase where it's got sort of the domino collapsing cloud tech those two things allow it to feel a fair bit more cushioned but without feeling kind of soft and mushy um i just wrote down a couple of quick notes about it from the from the tech point of view i guess so the three shoes from on that i've run in personally the cloud eclipse the monster and the stratus all sit on a six mil offset um the monster's the lightest of the at 275 grams and then the cloud eclipse quite a bit more shoe for only 285 grams which i felt probably on foot to be honest feels a little heavier than that um, and running in it being a bit stiffer and a bit more a bit more shoe in terms of stack height, it feels a bit clunkier compared to the monster for only ten grams. However, it's got uh, capabilities with the with the rocker and the rigidity um, that certainly agree with me um, like tomorrow morning, say today was workout and gym tomorrow morning will be um will be very sort of low and slow and the amount of cushion paired with the rigidity and the rocker and probably running on the concrete for 80% of my run, I think will, um, yeah, it's 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 a recovery day shoe for me. I don't, I probably put it next to like an endorphin shift um, in yeah. terms of its geometry and, and stiffness and foam density. However, I think it's just a tiny bit lighter because it's got so many of those those cloud, cloud tech kind of holes in the shoe as well. Um, we've probably seen the fit as well in a lot of on shoes has been on the generous side of things. Um, and this is a shoe that fits, I would say, a smidgen long and just a bit deep compared to other shoes in the category where it's a, it's a standard width um, and I've got a thick sock and plenty of space inside the shoe. So it's probably a bit more accommodating for more foot types being wider rather than the narrow shoes that just don't allow foot that's that little bit broader or, or deeper to kind of fit into it too well. Um, do you see yourself buying one of these shoes to run in? Uh, I don't know. I think it's really good for where you run um, around like a lot on the concrete. I'm not sure how I'll hang out where I'm going to be doing running, hopefully uh, going forward over some hills on the dirt. I'm not sure. I agree. It'll... I probably wouldn't long run in it down the coast. I would agree yeah. with that. Like single track, it's probably not what it's cut out for. And also just on the gravel with that, it's got like a torsion plate um, on the outsole with that exposed landing on the rocks on the firm plastic it's kind of gets a bit skatey i would say yeah. um the only gravel i've put it through on is around geelong where it's quite fine um like micro dust kind of gravel and it doesn't you don't really notice any rocks or anything so yeah i'd say it's yeah it's your daily or recovery day running on concrete shoe um, yeah a little bit of capability around like offloading in terms of four foot and, and calf Achilles with the rocker and rigidity. Um, I think I've put about 80 Ks in it. So the the durability of that rigidity is still like up for question, but hasn't hasn't deteriorated at all in the first 
hundred or so kilometers. So I think the um yeah, I think the on range is sort of taking shape a little bit more now to where we're seeing like uh we've obviously got a ratio and some great spikes, but taking shape now where we've got max cushion option, daily trainer option, and then almost like a bit of a heavier, more cushioned heel collar and upper option in the stratus. So that yeah fills a bit more of the wall um there's another shoe from them coming in the near future which is going to fill the slightly more stable stability side of things as well so it's good to see that that brand almost like progressing as much as you see they are with with all the things they do for for running locally yeah like they're filling out a range and we're going to see that i think mid next year they've got some cool stuff um coming so that'll be nice to get that on some feet their mid next year stuff takes them from um like filling out their range to like adding fun to their yeah. filled out range, which is going to be exciting, but that's all we'll say. <laughs> um, speaking of upcoming things, I guess like the December, it's it's only um, it's only a week and a bit away now, but like the December time, there's not a, a huge amount of things dropping, but it's probably one of the more important and and hype drops of the of the year. And it's happened already a couple of times, but it's the, it's the rarity of it um that makes it exciting so like the the super blast is re re redropping which is going to be hopefully early to mid-december um first things first if you want a pair of super blasts from us dm the store full name us size phone number and then you'll be contacted when they get there um we're not going to have one for everyone like last time but they're going to be coming in coming in hot um, but alongside it is a shoe that you got to put on with ASICS last week, I think. Yeah, I got to run in that one, the Nova yeah, Blast. Yeah, so the Nova Blast 4, which Nova Blast 3 has been, um, yeah, it's kind of like if it's their EVA fun shoe. <laughs> and then yeah. they've got the, they got the um, P-Bax fun shoe as well. But um, Nova Blast 4, like I've never put it on. Brie and Jules have run in a little. How did you find it when you got to um, got to put it on with Lee the other day? Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Like, it's one of those ones for me because I'm a, again a smaller bloke. I feel like, like that shoe's probably my super blast in a way. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I get like I really liked the super blast when I first got it, but I ran it again the other day and I was like, yeah, like it's good, but I don't know. <laughs> I, I think it's more it, like, resilient. Like, yeah. To fit the population more than like the broader population, so the foam. Being their p pretty firm, um, that resilience is something that, like, you've kind of got to put a bit more force into to get a little bit more back from. Yeah. Uh, whereas the Nova is, like, a bit more plush and bouncy. And I've done a big 180 on everything I like at the moment. I've gone yeah. from loving all the big shoes to wanting to go minimal and... <laughs> Deload hip at all costs. <laughs> um, so, yeah, wait until my calves get sore and I'll be stocking up on Super Blast again. Yeah. And that <laughs> Super Blast, Nova Blast drop will be at a similar kind of time. So, like, if you're... I don't know if you've had a Nova Blast three, like the four's looking like a, a an it's, update that's either an improvement or it's going to be an equivalent type of shoe for it's purpose. It's an improvement for sure. A yeah. um, little bit more sort of like guts under the forefoot. They felt a little bit poppier there. Yeah, quite um, nice kind of like stretch woven upper almost as well. I'm not sure exactly what ASICs call that, but that's what it looked like. A little bit less um, like overlaid meshes and kind of like a one piece job. But um, yeah, that that drop sort of. Couple couple weeks time and um yeah the super bus one being the big one we need to get like a uh, we don't have a, an official word on what the color is going to be but when it comes to that type of shoe it's just like a doesn't matter you just blank like, rule get what you can kind of option um yeah there was a couple of, a couple of guys asked for a triple black one um so that will that we wait in ten years and they will never see that uh, the fun shoes don't come in triple black. No, that is not coming in black ever, I don't think. No, not at all. Uh, was there anything else um, on the side of, like, nutrition? I know we've got precision since last time we chatted to Bree. Um, anything else, footwear, anything else, tech, running, that you've seen come in, are excited to see come in, let's say, in the next two months, or have seen and kind of, like, put on and been, like, probably not what you thought it might be? Or I don't know what I can talk about. <laughs> I I'd say <laughs> January the longest. Yeah, I, I don't know the exact dates of things. So I'm gonna... <laughs> you don't want to say something, you're not allowed to say yeah, I, I need that. I need the spreadsheet in front of me so I can... No, no, that's yeah, all good. Talk precision. About... Talk about precision. 
couple of minutes yeah. of uh, precision fuel and hydration. We've yeah added alongside a pretty broad range of nutrition. Yeah, so I've been using a fair bit of um, the precision now when I've been riding the bike. Um, so I, they've got the oh, what is it like the ninety gram packet? Yeah, the yoga which, pouch pack. Yeah, Rob will Rob will like that one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, he started that. <laughs> um i bet yeah it's really good it's like similar to morton i kind of i think i like the flavor of it better and the consistency um it's not as jelly like it's a bit custody has a bit of like a yeah I, lemony it, I think the tang. lemony lemony citrusy tang makes it a little easier to easier to cop than the morton after a couple of mortons you definitely get that it's a flavor fatigue from no flavor, basically. <laughs> yeah, and like I, I found when I'm sort of riding along, and I've got like my, one of my pockets just full of all my like non-calf gels. I'll accidentally pull out a Morton and just be like, ah, put that put one, that back, one in. back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got a pocket full of Morton at the end of your ride. Um, so yeah, yeah. And then, like their standard gel is 30 grams of carbs rather than 25. That's probably like the, I guess the nutritional benefit difference. But however, the packaging is 51 grams of packaging rather than 40. So you're just carrying a slightly bigger parcel. Um, for a really similar type of, I mean, the amount you're consuming to the amount of carbs you get is pretty similar. Um, we're probably seeing more more brands starting to use a little, um, a few less ingredients um, with their nutrition now. I think they're finding those guys, Pure, have done it well with natural ingredients, but they're probably finding the less additives and preservatives they put in their products. They're probably agreeing with a few people, a few more people's stomachs. Yeah, I mean, I, I've not had any issues with Precision or Morton or Pure, whereas I've had, was it Coda before, and that just, yeah, yeah that it's was a one and done sort on. of operation. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> it's a cheap one. Like, it's good to have there for a um, cheap option, but you get what, you, you get what you're given there. Um, one last question. What shoe will you wear for Dawnbusters? It's kind of like footpath, bike path, road for like a couple hundred metres. Oh, jeez. Don't say... Uh, I think, you know what, I think you know what I, I'm going to say. Uh, Takumi Sen. It's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, that's a bad goal. I knew you were going to say that yeah. shit. Um, and then you'll be in spikes for the track, so that'll yeah, be I'll be in my um, LD, my motor speed LDs with a six mil heel pitch. Tom DeCanto and uh, – I oh know it's Nitter that puts heel pitches in everything, isn't it, or both of them? I think both of them do. They're yeah. at 10 mil. I'm not quite there yet. Six yeah, yeah. <laughs> six mil for now. When you turn 30, you put it to 10 mil. <laughs> every year put another one in yeah so if you want to anyone we'll pretty much wrap it up there but anyone in geelong or the general region new year's eve morning of i think it's a 7 or 6 a.m start down at the waterfront if you want a shot at the title come down and race toby at uh, dawn busters try and take the food the the restaurant voucher off him he's got no one to take for dinner so <laughs> you can uh you can maybe take, go out for dinner with him when he wins it I'll take you. <laughs> Perfect. He's <Easy> done. <laughs> All right. I'll probably see you in about 12 hours. Uh, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for coming on. We'll be back in the next month, hopefully, rather than two months. But, um, yeah, if you uh, if you need any of those super blasts, slide into the DMs. <laughs>